fingers all around. So here's our the yep. intro that runs. Well, 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 well. Welcome, my friends, to this fine little radio program known amongst uh, friends and uh, and frenemies as uh, Smoking and Toasting. Welcome. It's uh, all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. You have landed with us on show number 123. It's show number 123. Welcome to the program. My name is Cruz. My erstwhile co-host is Ian Barry. Ian, you're looking sharp today. Welcome. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. You know, someone forgot to tell Houston... Uh, tell the weather that we live in Houston. Yeah, it was no actually kidding. frost. Yeah. on everything this morning. I know, and and yet right now it's warm and and, uh, and almost almost pleasant. Outside. This is this is what I like to refer as uh, uh, the season where you lose your jackets. Yes, because you yeah, always you have to wear it in the morning, you, and you leave them everywhere, and yes. then you forget about it in the afternoon because it's really nice. You are so right, my friend. <laughs> well, uh, welcome to the show. It is uh, as I said, uh, show number one hundred and twenty-three. We are brought to you by B&B Butchers and Restaurant at 1814 Washington Ave in Houston and in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth. So guess what I did yesterday? For the first time, I went to B&B Lemon, the cool little pub bar thing. That How'd you they, like it? It was awesome. We had a great time there. Mm-hmm. Um, my my best friend Dave Murphy is in town. He's here on the show. And uh, say hi, Dave. Hello. Uh, hi, Dave. All right. Good. Cool. <laughs> so, uh, so Dave's going to sample stuff with us and offer... You know, comical insights and and uh, do what most of our friends do. Now you said this guy's funny. If he's not funny, uh, uh, then you know he's getting beer spilled on him. Okay, fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, but uh, no, we all went over to B. We wound up at B and B Lemon. It was it was wasn't the destination, but it's where we wound up. And I'm telling you, they have uh, they have some really awesome cocktails, and they have um, a a menu that I I was. Pretty impressed with you. Had, you had a like bacon. A, a, yeah, no, yeah. Bacon. Bacon we did try the bacon, so good, yes. isn't it? <laughs> so at B and B, they take Chef Tommy's bacon. That, or I'm sorry, at B and B Lemon, they take Chef Tommy's bacon and they do it like a chicken parmesan, except with bacon. <laughs> so it's a completely <laughs> different just, take. Uh, that sounds devilish on bacon. Yeah, it's, it's wrong. Yeah. It's wrong on a number of levels. <laughs> uh, but no, we had we had great food there, and they even had some. Uh, Oysters from the colder northern waters, which oh, are the nice. kinds I like to eat. So, nice. yeah, no Gulf oysters for me. Um, so, uh, so anyway, B and B Lemon, uh, go and check them out there across the street from eighteen fourteen Washington Ave in uh, in Houston. So, they're definitely worth trying. We had a good time there. Great bar, great uh, friendly people. It was awesome. And they actually had outside the window. It was pretty cold yesterday, but outside the window, we could see ah. a tree with a lemon on it. That's awesome. And so I don't know what they have to do to keep one keep tree with a alive. lemon during the dead of winter, but it totally worked. It totally <laughs> That's worked. Awesome. I felt I felt like I was at B and B Lemon. So I see. Cool. I'm looking. I'm looking at the uh, Facebook feed here, and yes. uh, I see Travis Mitt, uh, Travis Whitmire is watching. I need some more of your whiskey, by the way. I'm I'm almost through the one that I had. Oh man, that Whitmire's is so good. So good. So good. Yeah, I've like been I've chocolate been, delicious bomb. Really been rationing. Uh, the one that I took home. <laughs> really, I mean, I'm so slow. Am I going? That is that has that. become my new favorite. Yeah. Well, there you go, Whitmire's. That's a big oh, deal. That's, that's fantastic. This is this is my. Uh, you're you're easily my like most knowledgeable whiskey friend. I might have said Chris Hart, but as we know, no one cares about him. Right. So uh, so you're <laughs> okay, easily no that, yeah. my most knowledgeable whiskey friend. So for you to say. That Whitmire's is like your new favorite. That's a big Man, deal. It is. It is outstanding. I just that's a big deal. Tremendously enjoy it. I am so psyched. <clears throat> yeah. Well, those guys were great. We want to have them back on the show again uh, soon, and we have some other uh, cool whiskeys actually coming up uh, uh, in the in the next few weeks as well. So we're we're psyched about that. So, um, so on today's show, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we are going to take you. I, I know, Ian. We you and I talk uh, occasionally about. How tough it is for us sometimes to review the really expensive cigars. You yes. you did the uh, the one off uh, last week, yes, yes. Zone, and it was what like twelve dollars, ten dollars, twelve dollars. Yeah, in that range. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, I at one point I did remember I did that twenty dollars cigar that mm-hmm. uh, well, like that's great, but you can't you can't smoke those cigars all the time. No, no. Cigar aficionado no. has just released their list of best buys. 
from 2018. Now, wait a second. If we can get everybody on here to share our video yes. all the time, uh huh. then maybe we can get to a point where I can smoke $20 cigars <laughs> all the time. Yeah, that's going to have to be a lot of shares. That's going to be a lot of shares. <laughs> a lot of shares. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, Cigar Aficionado's Best Buys are all lesser priced cigars that rated really high this year. What a great article that sounds Aficionado. like. So we'll be sharing those with you. We'll be telling you, and you can like jot them down, take notes. You can do... Uh, uh, you know, you can wander into your cigar store, and when they go, "Hey, we have the brand new, uh, um, you know, uh, Padron Anniversario. It's only twenty eight dollars." You can go, "That's great," and then you can walk out with five cigars for twenty eight dollars that are awesome. So, uh, so we'll look forward to uh, sharing that with you. Also, <clears throat> on today's show, kind of a cigar one hundred and one uh, uh, thing that we'll be doing: how to develop your palate for cigars. That sounds came good. across a great article about that. That's very basic. We'll add in. You know your thoughts, and just and just try to figure out where where we go from there. So, uh, so that'll be good. So, my friend Dave is. Uh, I mean, he and I go back a, a pretty long ways, probably longer than I would admit to most people. Uh, but uh, but this was my for years when we lived. We both lived in the Boston area. He was my go to <laughs> cigar smoking guy. So we would get together, smoke cigars, drink craft beer. Back when there wasn't all that much craft beer uh, out there, but there was mm-hmm. some, and uh, and th- so he's he's been he d- easily my cigar buddy that I go back with the farthest. We've had quite a few uh, pleasant uh, pleasant days together smoking, and uh, and so uh, so we'll have fun on the show, uh, Dave. Hopefully you'll you know you'll feel free to jump in and uh, and correct me just the way you would normally do in a normal conversation. <laughs> of course. I can't wait to yeah. see this interaction. And no, and Ian it's... does it all the time. So <laughs> it it happens, you know, it happens on the show quite frequently. Uh we're going to be tasting Ian believe it, there's a total role reversal going on in the show today. It's it's bizarro day. Yes, it's bizarro day because Ian has brought in two beers today and they're both IPAs. Down is up and up is down. Yes. And guess what I brought? A barley wine. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so normally, if you're a regular to the show, you know that Ian's the Ian's the you know barley wine guy, and he's the guy that brings the big you know the really big ABV beers, and I'm usually the guy that brings the IPA. So, so uh, my brother came down from uh, Pennsylvania mm-hmm. uh, over the holidays, uh, and he brought me you know a case of beer of random different things, and mm-hmm. there was a couple extras in there, and they're both IPAs. These are ones that my nephews. <laughs> Pitched in, they're like oh, interesting. Uncle well, Ian well, has both, to try that. Both the beers Uncle Ian brought are from Virginia. Interestingly, yes, uh, but but they're available in that in, in that, that area. area. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be trying the O'Connor Brewing El Guapo. Ah. It is a uh, it is a uh, agave IPA. Mm-hmm. So that should be interesting because I do love me some agave. So we'll see how it goes with the with the IPA. I don't think I've ever had. An IPA with agave. I don't think so I that, have either. Yeah, so that should be interesting. And Ale Works, which is a great brewery out of Williamsburg, Virginia. These guys have got it going on. Um, their superb IPA mm-hmm. uh, is on the tasting block. I know today. nothing uh, nothing about these except for we're going to try them. And then uh, I also brought along something that I'm hoping you're going to enjoy, Ian. I have not tried it. It's the Smog City Brewing Company Limited Release Bourbon Barrel Aged OE Barley Wine Style Ale. Nice, and I just, I just, you know, I can't imagine you won't like it, but we'll see, we'll see. And <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's already got like points on it, though. Right. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're liking it just from the title. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I've also brought along. We had what I believe is an eight year old rum on the show a while back that we all just loved. It was the Potenio. Mm-hmm. It was great. Today we'll be trying their twenty one year. Nice. So this will be very a very special occasion uh, on the program today. Plus. Uh, if we get time to it, uh, we mentioned on the show in one of the last week's episodes that Austin, Texas, was named the number one beer destination in the U.S. Now there's another uh, study, another article out, naming Atlanta the best city for beer snobs. Ah, so we'll uh, we'll delve into that and discover why. And um, oh, before we go any further, uh, do you have the little uh, the, the little red box there? Could you give me a drum roll, please? It's only the highest quality sound effects here. Now only eight days until Bud Light releases their ingredients label on their packaging. See, I thought you were going to do the applause. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Only that one, I days. don't know that it, it, it rated applause, actually. By the way, watermelon, barley, and hops. That's what it will say on the label. I've right. seen the label. 
So for that's, those of you amazing. who <laughs> have been waiting to buy, uh, see, I'm going to go out when it comes out. I'm going to go out and buy cases of Bud Light. This, this Bud because Light. Because now I know what's what, in it. What is in this Bud Light? What could it possibly be? <laughs> I think it's water, malt, barley, and hops. No, no, no. They're going to yeah. put a label. It'll, it'll all become clear then. Yeah, yeah. Right. Hey. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a good thing somebody's I mean, maybe they up. left out one of the ingredients. I doubt it. Yeah, well, yeah, I doubt it. I doubt it. But uh, <laughs> no, that, uh, because then it would read water, malt, barley, hops, flavor. <laughs> oh, that's what they left out was the flavor. <laughs> that's what they left out. I knew it. So yeah, so you guys are going to want to mark your calendars because eight days from today you'll be able to go and look at that ingredients label there in your favorite beer store and know what's in your Bud yes, Light. Yes, and yes. then of course once you do that. You're going to stock up on as much of it, and as then you can you can buy. get right on you can get right on track with uh, making fun of uh, craft beers along yes, with their that's right with their that's dilly right. dilly their bully campaign that that's they've right. got going on. You can right, and yeah. then and also you can buy it for its packaging because they just change the packaging and yeah. say how awesome it is. That's right. Look at this blue this blue packaging. Yes. Hey, woo! I'll buy that. Oh, it's the original bottle. Oh, I'll buy that. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Remember a, one uh, of one of those companies had the twelve pack <laughs> that was made so that you could just open the top and pour ice into and the pour 12. ice on top. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's practical, but again, it doesn't. change You don't the need taste a cooler. Of, doesn't change the taste. You of the just beer. need a cardboard thing to put ice. By the way, cardboard does fall apart after a while. <laughs> it does <laughs> if it gets wet. I'm just saying. So uh, it's been a, uh, a good week. I'm having a blast with my friends are in town, and we're uh, we're doing a little bit of smoking and eating and drinking. But I'm wondering if you. Have uh, smoked anything interesting lately, Mister? Well, Gale? it's 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 funny you ask because I did actually just smoke something interesting. See, you do that a lot. You have a cigar right before the I show. I do. I find that it's it's a good time for me to go sit down, write a review, have a cigar, uh, nice. Uh, you know, I go Casa de Monte Cristo and um, Ken over there at uh, Casa de Monte Cristo. He's been on the show a couple times. Uh, he uh, recommended a couple cigars, uh, three cigars to me. So I didn't nice. smoke them all <laughs> at once. Although, you know, maybe we Listen, work on blending cigars that way. Let me just tell you, I, I try to make it a point to only smoke in moderation. <laughs> only one, one cigar, one at, cigar a time. at a time. Yes, right? that's right. So uh, I picked out three different cigars that he uh, recommended to me. I'm, I, okay, so recently I've been buying smaller cigars because I realized that everything in my humidor is like... Is enormously yeah. uh, gordo size. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's immediately an hour and a half, right? Yeah. <laughs> which I love, which I yes. love. But but sometimes I don't have that time and uh, and... and I still want to, you know, sit down and have a thirty-minute or forty-five-minute cigar. So uh, I picked up uh, three hundred hands from um, from uh, 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 Southern Draw. Uh, they have a really? whole section, by the way. It's really nice. They have this whole Texas section right there. Um, three hundred hands Maduro, because you know, if you give me a choice of Maduro and something else, I'm always going to pick Maduro because I love Maduro. Right. Uh, this was a five and a quarter by forty-four. Uh, they call it a Coloniales, and it was a six-dollar cigar. Okay. So there we are with the price point. 300 hands. 300 hands, which I've is not had the, one they're named uh 300 hands because that's a that's a nod to uh they have two flavors this. They have the 300 hands and 300 monos. It's a nod to um the amount of hands it takes to create a to hand rolled craft cigar. a cigar. Yeah. And, By the uh, time how they many hands it goes it, through they, right, they right. raise the tobacco and so on, right? Right, right. So it's and it's really oh. interesting. It's a pretty cigar. Um there should be some pictures uh up on this, uh, and it, it was a smaller cigar than I usually smoke. But uh, you know, on the smaller cigars, you get a lot of intense flavors. The appearance on this is dark brown, very dark brown, uh, very roasted, like roasted coffee bean color, almost. You know, like almost black, dark brown. A very firm texture, uh, a very firm uh, feel on this, with with some texture on the um, on the wrapper. The pre light sniff on this. Uh, Leather. I got a lot of chocolate and espresso and cedar. Like this, this was right up my alley when it comes to what I want to smoke on a cigar. The pre-light draw. I used a punch. The draw was a little tight. Uh, I went ahead and stuck out the draw, uh, which which rewarded me later. Uh, even though it was a little tighter than I like at the beginning. Um, the you had a tough one last week. I did. I didn't remember that, and, and I had to fight with that one. Um, <laughs> This was. Uh, <laughs> I think Ian won. Although the cigar got him very, three times really good very, with the ash. Yeah. Very oh, large yeah. cigar. Oh, the yeah. cigar fought back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That was large the one that ash kept yeah. falling on me. Yes, I know. 
Um, it's like it's it was like that 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 particular cigar had had some kind of mental contact with me. If I thought I need to tip this, it just went right in my lap. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, so the prelight. This is the back to the uh, three hundred hands Maduro. This is the prelight draw on this a uh, little tight uh, coffee mocha cedar. I mean, it really just it, it was hard to distinguish anything else because it had so much of those three things, which makes a delicious aroma. By yeah, the way, yeah, no kidding. The initial light on this very spicy, right on the front of the tongue. Um, not pepper spicy, not like not like black pepper spicy. Almost more like a like a cayenne or uh, really? a little bit like that kind so of spicy. A, a really, yeah, a more spicy, of a, spicy, a yeah. spicy, yeah. And um, a hot spicy, yeah, a little bit of a hot spicy, which which was nice too, because uh, I'm used to the big pepper spicy, mm-hmm. which uh, black pepper spicy, which which this didn't really have. <laughs> um, roasted coffee bean was was a prevailing uh, flavor right on the initial light, and dark chocolate. Nice. Uh, the first third of the cigar, same spice, not peppery. I made a note of that. Uh, bitter chocolate, cedar, coffee bean. Like, like you remember, um, uh, Starbucks used to sell those uh, those dark chocolate covered uh, espresso beans. Yeah, it was right. like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it You're literally. Serious. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and not sweet chocolate, but bitter chocolate. Mm-hmm. Right? Really nice. Uh, really which nice is, bitter which chocolate. Is more better. Yeah, I mean, I like I like the, I like this one. It's not too sweet. Um, uh, the uh, the burn was perfect on this cigar. Even though the draw was a little tight, the burn was perfect. It was a straight line the entire time. Awesome. Uh, the second third of this cigar, the draw opened right up. Like it just it, like I was I was smoking. It was a little tight, and then all of a sudden it was like poof, wide open. And I was like, man, that's that's where I wanted it. Yeah. Uh, the cedar ramped up. Uh, chocolate and coffee were just huge and big. It had more smoke in the middle of the cigar, less spice. Uh, good solid ash, perfect burn all the way through nice. the first third. Of this. Nice. The second third of this, um, cedar ramped up huge. Um, oh, I already said the second third. Sorry, I'm reading this. <laughs> the reading third notes. third of this, <laughs> let me go to the last part. Is the spice ramped up a bunch on the third third. Uh, a lot of cedar. The cigar went out. Went out? It just stopped. Like, not because you set it down for a while. No. Wow. I took a puff. It was lit. I went to take another puff. It was out. Interesting. It was incredibly bizarre. I never had a cigar that just, and it was like on and off. It was like smoking, and then it stopped. So how did it handle a relight? So I relit it. No penalty. That's good. Uh, no good. penalty at all. Relit yeah. was just as delicious, um, and uh, and it was fantastic. I smoked it down to down to a nub. If you look at the picture on there, you'll see that like it's it's tiny at that point in time. Mm-hmm. Um, my only complaint with the cigar is the label was difficult to get off. Like I fought oh, with it, I actually pulled see? my pocket knife out and cut the label mm-hmm. off, <laughs> so, so I, I could smoke the last. Bit I think of that. I mentioned that uh, recently. I'd had some you that had I struggled a, was it a with. Punch or was it a, was it was the uh, H Upman by H Upman? Yeah, which yeah. it's a delicious cigar, but I had a whole box of them that, as I went through this box, every time I'd take the label off, and there's two two bands, two labels, <laughs> it would it would yeah. pull with it a little part of the wrapper right. leaf. And so, then from then on, the uh, cigar doesn't smoke as well. Right? Mine didn't Mine didn't pull the leaf off at all. It was it was glued to itself, but and it was glued tight but enough it was hard to where to you get couldn't it, slide yeah, it, but yeah. I couldn't get it. I just, I even got one corner and it tore, but it tore in the wrong direction. So finally I just pulled my pocket knife out and got it off of there. And that uh, that's my only, that's my, that's like one minor annoyance out of the whole thing. I highly recommend this cigar. I give it a 5.5, $6 cigar. Smokes a little better than what you're paying. Um, the 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 timing was right. The price is right. So if you want a small like dark chocolate and coffee bean cedary bomb, mm-hmm. this was great. It's definitely in the uh, in the beginning of full flavor, the high high part of uh, medium flavored cigars. Mm-hmm. Um, but five point five price versus quality, I think it's fantastic. Dave, the way our price versus quality scale works is that a f- it's a one to ten. Five means you get exactly what you paid for. Got so it. if you give a cigar a five, it's like that cigar cost me six dollars. It, it. it was worth six dollars. Wouldn't be happy paying seven for it. Would be thrilled if I paid five. That's right. that's that's the way that works. So when something gets a five and a half, a five point five, it's saying you know yeah. would have been okay with this even if it had been yeah. an extra dollar would have been fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. exactly. I'd, I'd have been I'd have been happy with it. And 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 it, oh, and the burn right down even with the relight, the burn was absolutely perfect. Until it the went entire out. time, <laughs> yeah. even yeah. after, even after it went out, and it came back. And you relit. When yeah. I relit it, it was completely, perfectly I'm even the entire time. Always impressed when there is no relight penalty yeah. on a cigar because yeah. even Absolutely. some, even some great smokes Ooh. are yeah. tough after after a relight, especially if if 
it's not just a touch up, but it's a they've gone all the way out. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. Uh, can can be tough. Well, I feel like I need to apologize right now to all of Smoking and Toasting Nation, uh, and I need to apologize for my fanboy status when it comes to AJ Fernandez. I'm going to talk about yet another AJ Fernandez cigar, but in fairness. Since I discovered that I like his blend so much, I've been trying out up. all yeah. the different ones that I can try, right? Because he is so consistent and so complex, and I, I won't get into something else that I smoked recently that was good, but it just didn't have that same complexity to it. I'm like, this is the same price as an AJ. Why would I not buy an AJ? You know, so uh, or or a Rocky or something else that I that I know. I'm going to get that same Yeah, I have a feeling if we ever have him on the show, I'm going to have to say things like, Cruz, stop hugging. Well, 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 here's the thing. (laughs) If we have AJ on the show, and you and I both met him. Yeah, he was super nice. Yeah, super nice. But if we ever do have him on the show, we'll have to have an interpreter because AJ uh, doesn't speak English. So he's obviously... Can you know? Can talk cigars in Spanish all day long, uh-huh. but he doesn't speak English really well. So uh, generally, when he travels and goes to cigar stores and stuff, they take an interpreter with him. So we'll have to we'll have to ask the interpreter to maybe tone down my enthusiasm a little <laughs> when he translates. <laughs> when I say, look that look that lost in translation yeah, when, right, the, right. when the, <laughs> the Asian man is speaking very yes. He says, "I'm going to go, uh, yeah, AJ, I love you." Just say something <laughs> like. He really enjoys your cigars. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, but after apologizing for my AJ fanboy status, and I will make you a promise to review a cigar made by somebody else next week. I promise. Um, that said, I got to once again tell you about how beautiful my cigar was this week. Visually perfect and delicious looking. We'll put a photo of it up here uh, in just a second if it hasn't already. But um, Bella Artez by AJ Fernandez. It's a, it's one of his. House brand, so it's not one he does for another company. This I, is one of AJ's. We cigars. split a box of those a while yes, back. Yes, yeah. yes. I think I have I, one left. I went back and uh, and pulled one out of the humidor, and let me tell you something. Uh, Bel Artes means uh, fine arts, I believe, mm. in Spanish, and it is appropriately named because it's beautiful. The pre light on the stick was actually pretty subtle, maybe a little bit of cedar. wasn't like a really strong, overwhelming uh, sort of pre light, uh, but the uh, the wrapper on this is a proprietary rojita. Uh, tobacco. I don't know what that is, except I believe it's Nicaraguan. So uh, the binders Nicaraguan and the fillers from Nicaragua and Honduras. Most of AJ's stuff is very Nicaraguan oriented. A uh, little bit of pepper, some creamy, almost a honey-like flavor. So a little different for an AJ blend, at least based on some of the things that I'd been smoking. That's what greeted me once I light, light it, uh, lit it up. Um, as it smoked, which it did flawlessly, by the way, uh, I picked up some dark licorice fa- flavors. This is not a flavor I generally like, either in licorice or cigars. But somehow it actually really kind of worked. In You're talking this. about like anise, like black yeah, licorice? Yeah, right, exactly, right, right. exactly. And and it uh, it also had a little bit of butteriness, and it just it all blended together just really beautifully. They seemed like... Maybe it would have been strange together, but it totally worked. There was some baking spice as well. This was a very nuanced and very unpredictable cigar. I kind of I've mentioned how some of AJ's blends that he's done for the different companies and stuff all have a certain similarity to the way that they smoke. This one was completely different, mm-hmm. but still absolutely uh, wonderful. Um, medium to full, complex, a wonderful change of pace, but still complex uh, like an AJ. It's a nine to ten dollar cigar, and it's just lovely. And I'm going to give it a six. That's a honestly, had it been twelve bucks, I'd have been okay with it. Wow. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, so I'll give it a six on price to quality. It's just, again, I apologize for my fanboy status, but those are the cigars <laughs> that I'm enjoying. <laughs> and you know, this isn't a real review show. We talked about this last week. Huh. We don't sit and do blind taste tests with, uh, you know, three different. You know, cigars of the same kind, and and get really super technical with them, and tell you that the uh, uh, that the licorice flavor is like a a black anise seed grown in the western valley of uh, uh, you know of uh, some African country that you've never heard of, or you know whatever. <laughs> like it's it's really just us talking about what we smoked and enjoyed, and so I really enjoyed this one. But I do promise 
I'll find something else to smoke next week that wasn't uh, blended by AJ Fernandez. <laughs> so I don't don't so. feel guilty about it. I think so, it's okay. Yeah. Well, it's just you know, <laughs> it can be a little embarrassing to be a fanboy. You know, people. <laughs> I don't want to be too predictable. So, hey, I had an AJ cigar and I really liked it. Ooh, wow. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Right. By the way, you can reach Cruz at Cruz at, at AJ, AJ Fernandez, Fernandez <laughs> That's right. That's uh, a joke. Don't actually go there. Yeah, don't actually go there. You, <laughs> you might get spam. I don't know. All right. Uh, a lot to do on the show today, including some IPA tasting. I'm really excited, Ian, about the IPAs that you brought on the show, even if it's just because it's unusual for you to bring IPAs. So. Uh, a little aside, Brian, yes. uh, Brian, my friend, put up here, Heineken released cooler packs. And just well, they so were the you ones know, you could drop the ice into. Yes. Yes, okay. And just so you know, the 2018 Consumer Survey of Product Innovation has <laughs> voted the Heineken 18 bottle cooler pack a product of the year in the beer category. you got to be kidding me. Maybe That's how amazing I may, it is. I may have to go buy one of those just because of that, like just to see if it actually works. Like how reusable is that? Uh, not. It's just a throwaway cooler? Yeah, it has okay, to be. Okay, so now we got to slam them for being wasteful. Oh, uh, see? Bad for the environment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we can you. always come up with something. No, I'm just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's just right. so ridiculous. Well, we don't sell the beer anymore. We just sell the package. Yeah. That, yeah. Well, let's see if that's the case with El Guapo Agave IPA. We'll be trying that in our next segment. Uh, my friend Dave is here. It's Ian and Cruz. Adam's on the wheels of steel. You are listening and watching Smoking and Toasting. We'll be right back. I love that Brian has just become our information guy. I know. <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, he's like a Wikipedia listener. Right. Be, yeah, go ahead and bring both of them. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is Smoking and Toasting. It's show number 123, number 123. My name is Cruz. Ian Barry is my co-host. Uh, Adam Andrus on the Wheels of Steel producing the program. And our guest today, my good friend, uh, Mr. Dave Murphy. Welcome to the show, Dave. And Ian is now going to show you how we do really expensive, uh, royalty-free sound effects here on the show. You ready? That's what I'm talking about right there. Only... Only the priciest uh, for us with well, when it comes to sound effects. If you want the sound of opening a beer, <laughs> yeah. the best way to real. get it is to it's actually, open, oh, a actually beer. open a beer. Yeah. Now it is more cost. Uh, it is more costly that way. Yeah. Now I will tell you that uh, a quick story about homemade sound effects, though. You do have to be careful. Um, there was a guy that I used to uh, work with. In fact, he was the guy that I stole the, uh, you know, the well, 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 well from the beginning of the show. The you know uh-huh. how to do the thing right. So the guy that I stole that from, and I freely admit that I stole it, because uh, remember, people, if you steal from me, you've stolen twice. Um, <laughs> but the guy, the guy that I uh, stole that from, uh, was trying to. I worked with him at a radio station once. He was trying to do some sort of a feature bit, and he needed an explosion sound effect. And we, of course, had the sound effects library that you buy that mm-hmm. has all this stuff. He didn't like any of the explosions, so he went and got a cherry bomb. Oh my god. And put it in a garbage can, like a, just one of the garbage pails that you uh, have in in an office, right? And stuck the microphone down in it, <laughs> lit it on fire, and rolled tape. And I was coming back from lunch, and the elevator opens, and as it opens, I see him running by with smoke <laughs> billowing <laughs> out of a trash the can. The flaming trash can. And I will tell you that it, um, when the fire department came... It cost us Soundgarden tickets to keep from getting a fire. (laughs) 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 To to keep from getting a fine, I mean. Uh, (laughs) Soundgarden's so good live. They they, were so good. They really were. But uh, but anyway... um, so there's you you do have to be careful with homemade sound effects, <coughs> and often with homemade beer. But that's another story. Uh, this is not a homemade beer, Ian. This is from um, a brewery in uh, Virginia, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm just going back to my show notes. Is, so I'll, let me put this up on so my I'll get this one right. There. Yes, uh, this is from O'Connor Brewing in Norfolk, Virginia. I don't think I've seen this this beer before. Now I have seen and and tasted other beers that have. Agave in them, but I don't think ever an IPA with agave. So I have a feeling I'm either going to love this or not like it at all. I can't wait to see what you say. Uh, I've already have you already it. tasted yes. it? Okay. I got, I'm, here we go. Drum roll. I'm not getting much on the nose, so I'll just go for it. Mm. 
Okay. You know what? I actually like it. That was an awesome pregnant pause, by the way. No, I, I really do. And I'm, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I was not expecting to like it because the other uh, beers that I have tried that have had a tequila or agave uh, mix in uh, of, of some kind of, uh, of some sort to them, I've just felt, I just felt like the flavors didn't work together. I love agave spirits, mezcal and tequila. Yep, oh yeah. I obviously love uh, beer. But maybe there's something about the bitterness of the IPA that, that makes it work. What do you think? I think it's delicious, actually. Yeah, the, it's it's so sweet and malty with that agave uh, flavor right up front, and then it rolls right into uh, a bitter hop, and then finishes clean, mm-hmm. like finishes with a with a, a mineral water, slightly right. bitter, very mineral lime sort of. kind of clean, mm-hmm. and it's it's interesting because there's a little lime flavor left over in the um, aftertaste, uh, I think. Dave, what are your thoughts? I know you like IPAs, but uh, but does agave work with IPA for you? Yeah, I was surprised. I didn't really taste a lot of the agave. It, it did finish more bitter, as, mm-hmm. as you just said. Uh, very clean finish. Uh, it presents well. I, I, I thought it actually had a pretty good nose up front. I, I would actually buy this. Like, and so that's, you know, there's so many IPAs out there right now yeah. that you don't, you know, you can taste one and go, that's... That's good. I enjoyed it, but it never makes your buy list. Well, this you know is a I mean? recommendation from one of my nephews, so uh, thank you so much for that. That was awesome. Well, and this is, I'm going to assume, uh, not available to us here in, in Texas at stores. I've no, certainly never seen it. No, I don't, I don't it, think but. so. I've never seen it. Uh, and my uh, my nephew's in the uh, Navy, so it's not surprising that it's in New Jersey or uh, in the Virginia or the surrounding area. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. So uh, Virginia, I think, is this one, right? Uh, yes, that's Norfolk. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Norfolk, that, that makes sense. That would be a local for him. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that um, different beers are available in different, and it's true with some spirits too. They're available in different states, but not in others. And we talk, yeah. we we talk about Yangling all the time. Uh-huh. Yangling available, of course, in Pennsylvania and many of the surrounding states. You can't buy it in uh, beer or liquor stores here in Texas, but you can get it in Florida. I have a future show for us, by the way. I have a few Yangling's, Mm -hmm. and I want to bring in Yangling, and I want to bring in Lone Star, and I want to do a side-side taste Mm. test. Because Yangling is like the Lone Star of the rest of the United States, But it it won't be blind, because I can tell you... Well, not blind, just a side-side taste test. I can tell you right on the first sip if it's a Yangling. Right, because... But I'm just I interested to see quality to quality <laughs> how they stack up to each other because yeah, you know it would be I drink I drink Lone Star nice and cold Lone Star is is fine you know for a, I don't want to think about it but I'm having a beer kind of thing cold. right so let me tell you uh, while we're on the subject of beer and stuff that's available in different places we've really uh, started to try to take it very seriously here on the show of course we're based in Texas we're based in Houston we get excited about the beer that comes oh, out in our local yeah. marketplace there are some amazing amazing breweries in this city Mm -hmm. and then austin is a couple hours up Mm -hmm. the road and there's amazing breweries in austin dallas san antonio have their share um and then there's even in the scattered little towns all around Mm -hmm. texas there's there's great stuff happening but we obviously want the show to be you know uh global uh, to be more global right so we're always looking for ways you know we did a show in california when you and i have visited you know, whether it's Michigan or Florida or uh-huh. someplace or Delaware, we'll try to bring back some beers mm-hmm. from that area. Uh, I've been able to get uh, on to some stuff online that's been able to get us some beers from different places, Washington State and different places that uh, don't necessarily have a beer extradition treaty with Texas to, <laughs> to get us the beer here uh, normally. But I was thinking about this, and I totally want to throw this out there. I know we've got people who watch the show and enjoy the show all over the country, wh- whether it's you know Texas or, or any state. I want to challenge you guys, if there is a brewery, a brew pub, a tap room, someplace that you like or want to go check out, take your phone with you, have somebody just shoot a quick three to five minute little segment with you, trying one of their beers and telling us what you taste, what you like. Send it to us. Send it to smokinandtoastin at gmail.com. No G's. I'm getting that right, aren't I? Yes. Smoking and toasting at gmail dot com, and uh, if you send it to us, we'll uh, we'll use you a- as a uh, beer reporter on the show. You can talk about what you like. So That'd be and, fun. and that goes for people here in our hometown of Houston too. If you want to do that, or you're at a 
a cool cocktail bar and they're making something awesome and you can get the bartender to talk to you about it, let's let's open up Smoking and Toasting Nation and have anybody that wants to participate and tell us what you think about different beers. Three to it, five minute clip. Yeah, just a three to five minute clip. It can even be shorter if you want. Just just so you're giving us something about what the beer or the spirit or the cocktail mm-hmm. is like. So Smoking That's a and toasting great idea. at gmail. I am going to do that. Yeah, well, you and I are supposed to be doing it. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> we're on the show, but we're supposed to be doing it. You know, I did that segment with uh, with Adam when yep, we were in yep. Mexico for his uh, wedding. That was that was awesome. Like watching back the show, just seeing us sitting there in a completely different surroundings and taste, or the stuff that you did from Tampa when you yeah, were there. Yeah, Ebor City great. was so fun. <laughs> right, and you so were just fun. you were just that guy was making cocktails, and it was awesome. So, uh, and by the way. Just as a word to uh, Chris Hart and Alan Denny, who nobody cares about, um, those segments will not count if you do one as an added appearance on the show. You have to actually be with us for that to count because those guys seem to be having. I'm some actually going to hang contest. out with uh, with uh, Alan Denny tonight over at Alan, Maduro's. Uh, he's such a great guy. Yeah, we're going to meet yeah. up at Maduro's yeah. and have cigars and chat for a while. I'm see, actually I see jeans on here. I'll be out in your neck of the woods. Gene. I'm actually, in fact, I'm just going to look outside right now because I'm halfway expecting. Nope. <laughs> no, 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 no. Halfway expecting him to crash the show today. Right, right. Chris Hart is one up on it. Uh, <laughs> For appearances, but hey, have we course, coined the term "pod crash"? Pod, that was you coined that. I love, I love that. I love that phrase. Like that's a real thing now. <laughs> so, Ian, you know what else we should do? Uh, talking about expanding the footprint, is you and I should totally go to mud Disney. wrestling. Oh, what? I'm no, sorry, I, different idea. Okay, gotcha. Different idea. We'll come back to that one. Segment five. <laughs> no, we should totally go to Disneyland. Okay, Disneyland has opened their first ever brewery in downtown Disney. And it's I like uh, that it's downtown Disney. Yeah, well, you know what downtown Disney is. It's not like in the parks. It's like you know how they have Disney World and right, and right. Epcot and the other parks around. Or in California, it's Disneyland and California Adventure, and then they have the hotels and stuff. So downtown Disney is like the sort of retail and restaurant space that's in between the parks. So you don't have to it's pay to go Main into the Street, park. Yeah. Right, right. yeah, you don't have to pay to go into the park to do this, but it's, I didn't part, know of the, that. it's yeah. part of the Disney complex. Well, they've just opened up in downtown Disney, and I'm really, really actually kind of psyched about this. They've opened up their first brew pub, and it's Ballast Point. Wow. wow. We, How we cool are is that? fans of the Ballast Point. Yeah. How cool and, is that? And uh, they uh, said the pub is going to have a menu that would excite the entire family. Of course, they're going to say that. <laughs> as well as, here's the part I'm excited about over 50 different styles of Ballast Point beer. Holy wow. cow. 50. 5 0. Like, what do you even say to that? Yeah, including limited edition varieties that are exclusive to this Anaheim, uh, California. Y- you know what location. I say to that? Yes. We're taking an Uber. It's road trip to. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that'd be one hell of an Uber. <laughs> oh, man. So, you know, um, it, it, Dave, you and I have actually been to Disney World oh, yeah. uh, together. Oh. Think about being able to, like, That's wrap crazy. up the evening at the brew point, oh, yeah, uh, at cool. the brew pub at the Ballast How long have so. you guys known each other? How long has it been? Like we met what about ninety five? I guess. Yeah, I had like hair that. and the beard was darker, but yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's, it's been. I was maybe eighth grade. I'm yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's a great story when uh, when Dave and I met. We didn't know each other, but uh, we had uh, uh, both gone to a um, a little getaway up in Vermont uh-huh. uh, with some mutual, mutual friends yep. who all decided that we were going canoeing, and. I, you know, look. You I, don't seem like the canoeing sort. I, well, I grew up in Texas. If you canoe in Texas, you know, you're paddling around on a lake somewhere. With beer. Lake, lake Conroe. With beer. Oh, yeah. I took cigars. <laughs> he did. I, I did. I took cigars on the uh, on on the canoeing yeah. trip, right? Well, when I got there, it was more like whitewater rafting. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. crazy, the rapids. Yeah. yes. And there was actually a tree that had fallen over the river, and the water was flowing over it super fast. I didn't know how to maneuver the canoe. Against it, so I'm um, yeah. I dumped. I'm there. I'm upside down uh, in the in the canoe, clinging to this tree, fallen tree for dear life. And then here comes Dave. Wham! Like yeah. uh, next canoe down. Uh, yeah. So that was how we he, met. He could have drowned. I yeah, mean, seriously. Yeah, no, it, it was, was actually. Oh, was wow. Fortunately, we were okay. But as I uh, got back in the canoe and made the way down the river, I realized yeah, my my cigars were gone. Oh, so, and I, I hadn't oh. had to. So this 
like this is what a friend does, but like we weren't even really friends Just yet. Met him. Yeah. yeah, I I'd also messed up my leg a little bit, so I cut the trip short and got a ride back to the house where we were all staying. And I was like putting my foot up, trying not to get it to swell and stuff. Dave shows up a couple hours later. He went someplace and bought me cigars. You're not a friend. You're a hero. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Like you saved them so, twice. I yeah, know. That's exactly. Yeah, I felt, so that's how we met. Yeah, I felt so bad for him. I said, "We'll get him some cigars." <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> you saved them yeah, twice. That's yeah. amazing. And they were actually pretty good cigars. Nice. So you know, wasn't wasn't uh, wasn't just a gesture. It was it was you know a, a complete that's thing. Awesome. So, yeah. So that's how long we've known each other since uh, since back in that day. But. Uh, uh, yes, and we've we've been to Disney together, but we've never had a chance to sit down at all, you know, in one of the Disney resort areas and, right. and do craft beer. So, so this is very exciting, <coughs> and I'm kind of hoping that they follow suit in Orlando too, because uh, that yeah. would be a perfect well, idea for Disney. Well, Orlando has the Irish pub. You could smoke cigars that's true. and have the Guinness and the music outside. That's, oh, that see that yeah, uh, no, that's I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, <laughs> I'd forgotten no, about that. Stroller free zone. <laughs> yes, and uh, as Dave can tell you, I don't know what it is about uh, about theme parks and strollers, yeah. but they find me. They find yeah. the back of my. They angles, always get your angle and they ram yeah. into yeah. me. I don't know what it is. It's uh, it's a little bit uh, <laughs> a little bit disconcerting. That's true. That is true. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to taste the next IPA uh, that. Ian has brought for us. This one is uh, not agave. It is the Aleworks Superb IPA. Aleworks, I've never had one of their beers that I didn't think was just spectacular. Superb. So, um, yeah, or superb. Or so superb. we'll see how superb the IPA is uh, when we come back in the next segment. Plus, Cigar Aficionado's Best Buys Best buys meaning best cheap cigars, or cheaper cigars anyway, uh, from uh, 2018. And in our uh, in our segment here today, before the show is over, we'll go over a little Cigar 101, how to develop your palate for cigars. And people ask me that a lot. They go, uh, you know, how do you, like, learn to taste stuff in cigars? Because I enjoy them, but I'm, I'm not tasting the stuff that I maybe right. read in reviews or stuff. So... We'll go over uh, what you can do to exercise that palate muscle uh, coming up on Smoking and Toasting. We'll be right back. Oh, no, go ahead. That's that's an incredibly interesting idea. It really is. I've never had anything like it. It's good. It's interesting, the the, the lime leftover Well, lime and agave do go well together, even if... Welcome back, my friends. This is Smoking and Toasting. Uh, we are so glad to have you on the program. It's show number 123. We are brought to you by a B&B Butchers and Restaurant with locations in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth and at 1814 Washington Ave in Houston. Right across the street from the 1814 Washington Ave location is B&B Lemon, which is also a really cool little pub to try out. You will, you will enjoy that. So uh, while Ian pops the top on our next beer... Oh, oh! But that was worth it. See, it was it was it was a two try, but it was totally worth it. That was that, yeah. The first one was a misfire. Yeah. That was totally my fault. <laughs> uh, Atlanta, uh, Georgia, was just named the best city in the world for crap craft beer snobs uh, in a uh, list of uh, uh, it was named crappy in some other uh, uh, lists, which we won't go into today. But uh, <laughs> no, Trip Savvy's list of where to go in 2019, uh, which compiled uh, that's a very popular site. It compi- uh, compiled their travel editor's info uh, just in time. Of course, you know, the Super Bowl is in Atlanta, so there will be uh, some people who have really exorbitant ex- expense accounts will be going to the Super Bowl in a couple of weeks. Um, the uh, the city, though, was just named the best city in the world for craft beer snobs, according to uh, Trip Savvy's editors. Uh, they combed through the analysis of 60,000 hotels, restaurants, and attractions around the world, and Atlanta earned the title thanks to 20-plus breweries, five of which were previously recognized in the Editor's Choice Award. So it wasn't just a convenient thing because of the Super Bowl. Uh, the site also named the best cities for uh, plant moms, history buffs, sports fans, brunch enthusiasts, and others. But we'll stay with, uh, we'll stay with craft beer. Uh, the oldest brewery in Georgia, Atlanta Brewing Company, formerly Red Brick Brewing, features nearly 20 beers on tap, including an IPA ode to Hartsfield-Jackson, the world's busiest airport. 
I'm not sure if that's a particularly inspired <laughs> IPA <laughs> name or or not, but uh, Sweetwater Brewing. We've had Sweetwater's beers yeah, yeah. on the show before. Uh, Monday Night Brewing and Decatur's uh, Three Taverns Brewery are all uh, mentioned. They say if you are going to the Super Bowl uh, at Mercedes-Benz Stadium on February 3rd, at the stadium you'll have your pick from 1,264 different taps and selections, including half a dozen Georgia craft brands like Wild Haven Beers, uh, ATL Paleo. By the way, I misspoke. Not 1,264 different taps, but 1,264 different taps, not 1,264 different brews. That that would be that would be a bit over the top. Uh, But uh, they will have uh, they'll have Wild Haven's uh, ATL Pale uh, Pale Ale there as well as. uh, some stuff from Second Self Brewing and City Tap Brewing. And, um, of course, you'll be able to buy a Bud Light because they advertise very heavily on uh, big sporting events like the Super Bowl. And the one thing that you may want to do, though, if you're going to order a Bud Light at the Super Bowl, if you're going, before you make your way over to Mercedes-Benz Stadium, you may want to go to, like, a grocery store or someplace, buy like a 12 pack so that you can tear off the ingredient label and take it with you that way when you're enjoying or let's just say consuming your bud light in the stadium you'll have the ingredient label and you'll know what's in your beer that's right or you could just listen to me right now tell you it's water malt barley and hops i but what's in the beer we're about to drink well now that's a different question this is this oh so I'm guessing that the label might give us some information here. Let's see. We know it's water malt, water malt barley and hops. I don't know that because it doesn't say it on the label. Oh, see, this is like even though that's what beer actually is, mm-hmm. it doesn't say that on the label. Okay, what like, do, what does what it, it say? does say is ambitiously hopped American IPA with notes of tropical fruit. Yeah, I'm getting tropical fruit on the nose like big crazy. Time, big I haven't time. I haven't uh, actually tasted this yet. I believe you've done a little research. I have already. been doing research on this. <laughs> I have to tell you my uh, my nephews have great taste in IPAs. Mm-hmm. This is outstanding as well. It's and so you're malty not the up IPA front. king. Let's let's be clear. You you're picky about your This IPAs. right here this ale works. Uh, let me hold that up right here. Yeah. Can you see that? In the I camera? will tell you right now without a doubt is one of the more balanced and best IPAs I've had. We talk about this a lot when it comes to IPAs, yeah. that our favorites are always the ones that are more balanced. Which is funny, because on the nose, <coughs> uh, there's a lot of tropical fruit, but there's also some pine cone in there. Like, yeah. definitely get a little bit of that pine cone. Um, yes, and that can be troubling for you. Well, it's, it's usually a red flag for me, mm-hmm. you know, because it means that it's going to be a very bitter aftertaste a lot of times. But in this case, this is so malty up front and balanced. This is one of the most balanced um, IPAs I think I had. There's a uh, there's a brewery in Keller that makes an IPA that's balanced like this, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. I, I, I almost have it, but there's a uh, there's very few breweries that make an IPA like this. Well, I, I this is outstanding. Brings to mind my favorite, which is Lone Pine Brewing's uh, Yellow Rose IPA, which is I think an incredibly well balanced. Beer. I think that's a great IPA. It put next to a six pack of this, I would buy this. Really? That's yeah. very interesting cuz you got to go some to beat Yeah, and I would, I would put this I would put this neck and neck um and maybe even buy this over the uh uh the uh, Two Hearted, although that's a tough one. Two Hearted is pretty Dave, amazing. You like the IPAs, and yes. you have had a chance obviously because of where you live to be able to sample some that maybe aren't that common in our area. Right. What do you think about this one? How does it does it strike you as balanced? Uh, yeah, it's balanced a little thin at the finish. Um, I, I expect a little more bitterness. Um, I I like it. I don't think I like it as much as Ian does, but it's uh, it's it's good. Well, we've got some of that more cowbell in the refrigerator. More in my cowbell, house, more cowbell. You'll, yeah, you'll you'll not find that to be thin on the finish. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> some of that so more cowbell. Well, I think is a, is <laughs> right. a is a great offering. That's got a lot of what I don't want in my. Right. Uh, right, which IPAs. is which and that's is a the, whole different beer. yeah right I mean absolutely, yeah. absolutely so it's it interesting because it, it like to me this is absolutely outstanding and and to you you're expecting different things out of IPAs and you enjoy different yeah. things so it's it's yeah. it's interesting to see that well, contrast see I I love this I I think it's I think it's really delicious I think it's very very well balanced I'm with you on that um. I think I'm probably somewhere in between the two of you in terms of what my sort of like sweet spot is for taste because I wouldn't put this ahead of a yellow rose, but I'd put it darn close. Uh, and and yellow rose would have just a little more of that 
bitterness there. Yes, I will take some more. Uh, Yellow Rose would have just a little more of that bitterness on the finish, <coughs> and uh, but yet still not getting anywhere close to like a, uh, you know, like a more cowbell or something, you know, a double IPA right. or something like that. So, no. uh, but that's very interesting. Um, uh, and and Dave, I, I I totally understand I, where you're coming. I'm from. curious out of this. Have you had the um, Dogfish Head 120 minute? No, uh, I drink a lot of 90 and 60. I think okay, so 90 minute to me mm-hmm. is is literally uh, like that is the pinnacle of the style. If you ask me, yes, it's an amazing idea. Love 90. Yeah, uh, the 120 minute. 120 is just a little. I, I love it, but it's a little over the top. It's it's very over the top. Yeah. It's usually around 18. percent Right. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but the flavor of that is it, like to me, this has that multi up front like that has, although it's not 18. percent This is coming in at 6.3, which is much so much normal. more. Like, but at this much has lower, that. Yeah. This has that round maltiness right up front. Yeah. And then to me, it just balances, and I'm okay without having too much bitter on the finish. Um, personally, because sometimes the over bitterness is what turns me off, and I know a yes. lot of people really enjoy uh, that. No, too much bitter, and no, no, also if you're drinking it versus eating it with drinking with food. Right, right. That mm-hmm. that also helps inform. Uh, no, you're absolutely if, right. If, if it's too bitter and you're just drinking it straight, uh, that that gets the this effect. is is um, it's smooth enough. It's non non bitter, whatever the opposite of bitter is. Um, it's non bitter enough that this could almost be a poolside. Summer session mm-hmm. beer, you know, yeah. one that you could have on ice at the pool and just enjoy, you know, several of. And let's face it, if you're at the pool in the summer and you're down in several more cowbells, you're a better man than I am because that's, that's <laughs> cowbell it, you know, will win. Yeah, cowbell will win. That's <laughs> right. Exactly right. Yeah, what's the so, ABV on the more cowbell? It's in the I want to say it's nine point yeah. six yeah, or something nine, like that. Six, I, nine, think, eight. I think yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a great <laughs> beer, though. Oh boy, is it a great beer, man! Last well, night I was at, I was at a local place called uh, Rudyard's, and they had the Twisted X. Uh, a uh, uh, Belgian strong <laughs> ale. Oh, nice! Oh, oh so nice! So good, yeah. and it's only at I think it was only at a uh, seven or eight percent. Man, the flavor and it's in it. so fruity, yeah. so yeah. delicious, so mm-hmm. like. Mm. Anyway, yeah, well, just a shout out to Twisted yeah. X you on know, that one. Rudyard's is the first place you and I ever had a beer together. Did we now? Yes, first place we ever had oh. a beer together. My wife said, "You got to meet this guy, Ian. You'll like him." He likes cigars. I think I think that worked out for the best. And I, and I was like, I was like, okay. At first, I was like, oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, cool, cool. You're uh, like, he doesn't look like much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he likes cigars. I've yeah, seen people that look like yeah. that. But he likes cigars. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's take it to the quick break. We will be uh, right back. We're going to be testing. Uh, testing. We're going to be tasting. <laughs> Taste test. I, I think it may have already passed the test. A 21 year old Porteño aged rum we're gonna see wow. how this uh, how this rates because we've had some awfully good rums on yeah. this show yeah. but i don't know if we've ever done a 21 well you know here's the funny thing is it's been so long since i've even touched a, a rum that's even average i think because every time we have a rum on here, it's outstanding. It's something yeah, right. you know on that next level. <laughs> yeah, if you go someplace and just have a Captain Morgan's, uh, yeah, um, I don't, it's, oh. it's not going to stand up. You know what's funny? <laughs> uh, what's funny to me about that is uh, I don't like the smell of a lot of those. Right. Like they, you can kind of like cheap rums. You can kind of smell it. <laughs> well, I can I can already tell you because this bottle is actually already been unsealed. Oh. <laughs> uh, I can tell you it's this not is, a virgin bottle. This is not going to have that no, rum smell that, that you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's twenty one. It's legal. Not a virgin. We'll, 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 henceforth, we'll, re- we'll be referred to as the rum skank. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be right back with not the rum skank uh, next on uh, smoking and toasting. <laughs> this really is a good idea. Really good. Yeah. yeah. This. It, but see, this is this is everything I want in an IPA. So I think it's very good. I don't think it was like, oh my god. Yeah. That was good. It's drinkable. I like how drinkable it is. Yes. Yeah. True. Welcome back to Smoking and Toasting. It is the radio program that is all about craft beer, uh, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. Uh, we are brought to you by B and B Butchers and Restaurant, available in Houston and Dallas, or Fort Worth actually. Uh, the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth and in Houston at 1814. Washington Ave, bacon, 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 bacon. I think you can get Yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to be uh, sampling this rum momentarily, but 
Uh, you know, we brought you in recent shows those lists of the best cigars of the year from all the different publications, everybody from the Rob Report to Cigar Journal to Cigar Aficionado. And interestingly enough, the average price of one of Cigar Aficionado's top 25 cigars this year, the average price, $16. Yeah. Yeah, Whoa. once you put them all together Whoa. and divide by 25, Whoa. yeah, 16 bucks. So, you know, some good smokes in there for sure. But not exactly on your everyday smoking right. budget, at, unless you, you know. Well, and some of them are just hard to find. Unless you make the kind of money and Ian makes, in which case. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> which case, you know. Which daily you smoke. Can. I make yeah. the kind of money I never actually see. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen it. I've seen it drive by on the highway. <laughs> uh, but Cigar, uh, Cigar Aficionado put together a list of 24 different smokes that scored 87 or higher that each have a suggested retail price of six dollars or less before taxes. So this so, is like we've we've done our list. Where we we call them lawnmowers, basically. Mm-hmm, yeah, and you know I I tend, tend to think of lawnmowers more like a three to four dollars well, yeah, cigar. Yeah. But but yeah, these are the these are the cigars that Cigar Aficionado named as being um, as being uh, I think these are all eighty nine or better uh, in in score, and they're all. Six bucks or under. Starting with the H. Upman Vintage Cameroon Corona. Uh, I've had that. It's actually a very nice smoke. Uh, 89 points. It's uh, suggested retail, $5.75. Nice. The Henry Clay Rustic Chirut uh, at four twenty-five. It got an 89 as well. The nice. Gilberto Oliva Reserva Blanc. Mm. You and I have had it. Yes. These are great Those smokes. Those are fantastic. And they're wonderful just little go-tos. They uh, retail for between 5 and 6 and they are uh, they're wonderful. They you scored know, ninety two in cigar well, fish. Um, uh, I, w- I want to give wow. a shout out to Oliva just because they're they're most of their line is a very affordable line and they're outstanding cigars. Well, they really right. are. I mean, you can pay a little bit for the very top of their line, but even those are not like they're the Melania, the yeah, Melania, right? Sorry, was, but they're not twenty six. They're not twenty six yeah. bucks. Right, they're right. more like twelve or thirteen, depending on what mm-hmm. size. Uh, what size that you're getting. And the Gilberto Oliva, it's just, it's Fantastic. their, like, uh, let's do an affordable cigar that's really, really good. Yeah. And that's exactly what they came up with. Uh, I'm not familiar with this smoke, but it uh, retails for about five fifty. It's the El Galan Semilla Cubana Habano Robusto, mm. reviewed in Cigar Aficionado no idea. for 89 no. points. The Don Diego Lonsdale yeah. got 89 points. Uh. Now, Don Diego has historically been one of those blends that you thought of as just, oh, that's an El Cheapo. It's not going to have any hmm. uh, you know, any real nuance to it. Uh, but this cigar got 89 points, and it retails for just a little over 5 bucks. So uh, the 724, and that's not 724, but 7-20-4, 724 Hustler Series Dog Walker uh, came in at Long 6 bucks, mm. and it is... Eighty nine on the uh, scale. Nice. Uh, it's a it's an interesting looking cigar. It's one of those barber pole uh, type of cigars. So to even get a cigar like that for five dollars, that's yeah, that's it, you don't usually get something like that for that. And then it, for it to come in at an eighty nine, very nice. The last call by AJ Fernandez Pequena. Now last call is AJ's budget brand, right? Uh, and uh, this one got a review of ninety points in Cigar nice. Aficionado, and it's a six dollar cigar. <laughs> the Gilberto Oliva Reserva 5x50, which is just another right. of c- cigars in that line. Retail, I think, is $5.80. It got a 90 in nice. Cigar Aficionado. Yeah, so, and, and, and that's because it's a wow. different size. That influences the flavor and, and what well, you does. get out of it. And these are smaller cigars. Uh, not They're not tiny, but they're like yeah. not the big grandes. But I, I think those have great flavors. Uh, we snagged a couple of those, if you recall, when we were out at the... Uh, uh, at the Whiskey Social this oh, year. Absolutely, yeah. and, uh, and they were terrific. Uh, the Project 805 Petite Corona. Uh, I don't know much about this cigar. It's a Dominican cigar. It retails for four ninety nine. Got a 91 in Cigar Aficionado. Nice. I mean, that's that's not bad. The La Aurora 1903 Cameroon Churchill. Their Cameroon cigar, a 91, and it retails for 6 bucks. I've had that one. Okay. It's good. Here's another Gilberto Oliva, the Reserva Blanc, five point seventy five by forty three. This is the one that comes in the little cedar uh, with the little cedar, cedar tube wrap, wrapped, yeah. wrapped around the lower third. Ninety two in cigar fish. There's something wow. fun when you have a cedar wrapped cigar mm-hmm. about you know lighting it with the cedar. 
Yeah, oh, yeah, I love doing that. Uh, I've almost caught several very important buildings on fire by trying to do that. <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, but yes, it's, it's a great deal of fun. I love doing it. I used to actually take those off the cigars, and I would keep them in the humidor right, so I could right. use them as cedar uh, lighting uh, sticks. Uh, and after one almost disastrous event, I stopped doing that. It's called a split, uh, I believe. Yes, yes. A spliff? Split. split. Oh, okay. Gotcha. The spliff. Spliff is something different. I right? believe it is. Usually yeah, done is. with with what, what, what we call it, a blunt wrap. A blunt wrap. Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, are you familiar with the punch after dinner cigar? Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh uh. It looks familiar. It's just, it just looks like one of those regular old punch cigars. Right, right. It got a ninety three on Cigar Aficionado. It's five bucks, uh, five five dollars and eighty nine cents. Is the I didn't even remember to buy some punch price. cigars anyway because mm-hmm. I don't I don't know their line very well. I haven't mm-hmm. smoked very many punch cigars. There's also the uh, Last Call by AJ Fernandez, Chiquitas, which is a very short cigar, but it's not like a nub. It's a shorter, but not quite so uh, big around fat cigar. Uh, retails for four fifty. Scored a ninety three. And cigar That's aficionado. Outstanding. Ninety-three is a huge score. Usually, ninety-threes are reserved for like That's big. the Cubans mm-hmm. and the uh, uh, you know the anniversarios and and things like That's that. That's the kind of score that the cigars of the year start getting. Mm-hmm. That's right. right. Yeah. The JFR Lunatic Short Robusto Habano. We've had the Lunatic, yes. if you recall. It's a great yes. name. It scored ninety-three. It's uh, it's just under. $6. I've had a few in their line actually, mm-hmm. and one of my, one of the ones that I bring <laughs> when I go uh, tubing on the river. When I need a cigar to last four hours, is there seven by seventy? Oh, that's your that's your famous tubing cigar. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, finally, the Charter Oak Connecticut Shade Roth, Rothschild, which I'm glad I'm saying that before the rum. Uh, the Rothschild <laughs> from Charter Oak. It's a Connecticut Shade wrapper, five dollar cigar, ninety three points. I've had a couple of Charter Oaks. I don't think I've had their Connecticut Shade uh, uh, one. I think I had uh, Maduro, but. Um, Anyway, those are all from Cigar Aficionado. You can see this in the upcoming uh, issue, I believe. Uh, they'll have this. That's list. a that's an important list, just due to well, the fact really that's is. the affordable list. That's like if you're gonna you're, if you're a, a daily or semi daily uh, mm-hmm. cigar smoker, that's where you're gonna live. You know, right, that's, that's it's the gonna the be in this point. five dollar six dollar right. price range. If you only smoke on like momentous occasions, that's okay to smoke $20 cigars. I try know? to only smoke on days that end in Y. That's my philosophy, right. and that's right. that's working pretty well for me. So. <laughs> uh, but no, you're absolutely right. You can't, you can't, and, and I, I personally believe if you're, if you're smoking a $12 cigar every day, you're not going to enjoy that $12 cigar as much as if it's a little more of a, an occasional thing. You know what I mean? If you're smoking, it, it's, it's kind of like, you know, if you if you eat at a really expensive restaurant every night for dinner, yeah. you have to appreciate it the same way as if you don't do it that often, but then occasionally you go, yeah, I'm going to go out and spurge a little bit. You go out and you go, oh, my God, that food was amazing, <laughs> right, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's kind of that way. So uh, so that's why this list, as you said, is, is very important. It's very important. I think it's good. Now, uh, we're going to reverse that trend and not go, although i got to be honest with you, this was not nearly as expensive a bottle of rum as you might think for a 21-year-old Porteño. First of all, I'm going to tell you that Porteño is an extremely affordable brand right, right. to begin with. It is not it's not in the locked liquor cabinet at your local Now, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, the one you brought in before, we really enjoyed it as was well, an and it was quite affordable. It was quite I want to say it was a, a just under $30. Yeah. And it was delicious and worth every every penny. So this one's about I want to say it's about twenty dollars, maybe twenty two, twenty three dollars more than than that one. So we'll we'll say that right at the beginning. It looks just like it actually uh, in the bottle, except for the twenty one where the eight would have been. Right, and it is a Colombian rum, and I think it's probably time for us to. Uh, oh, see, th- I, I opened that with no sound, so I closed it again to see if I could get a sound. Let's try it. There it that's is. That's better. Yeah, that's better. Immediately, by the way, I was met with this. Wonderful aged rum aroma. This is good stuff. Not not the what did I call it earlier? Oh. The, the rum skank. You you're gonna want to pass that one over to Ian because I, I poured that pretty heavy. Yeah, I'm the dry. Uh, <laughs> oh, I get the heavy pour. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm not gonna complain about that. Yeah, no, and nor should you. By the way, no. This has no rum skank. Yeah, no, none whatsoever. <laughs> and it has none of that. And I don't even dislike oh, wow. this this flavor this uh, this aroma. 
But you notice that some rums, particularly Jamaican rums, I've noticed have a little bit of a rubbery uh, smell right, to them. Right, right. It's not unpleasant. It's just it's just there. Yeah, it's just there, and I don't think it's quite as elegant. This has a huge sugar as, cane as this sugar cane right up front, and like. it really you can almost already get the aging the uh, the uh, the sort of oak barrel mm-hmm. uh, vibe to it on the nose. Wow. It just really picks up with some amazing uh, amazing notes on the nose. Ian, you are staring into your plastic cup. This has got a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, it's got. Man, that sugar cane is huge. That raw sugar cane mm-hmm. is so huge. Like, I just have you ever wow. like chewed on a piece of that before? Like that flavor yes, is so, on a, on a piece of sugar so cane. Yes. distinct. You know, mm-hmm. this has a ton of that, but it also has that vanilla and oak, and it has um, man, what else? There's tons going on in this. Mm. This is incredibly complex, and it's way smoother than rum has a right to yes. be. Yeah, like Very this is smooth. you're you're right about that rum. Very you don't smooth. think. Well, we've had a lot of really Molasses premium. Is huge. We've had a lot of really premium rums that still do have a good sort of a whiskeyish bite to them, and they're delicious and right. they've got great complex flavors going on. But they still have that sort of punch on the way down. This doesn't have that. So this is interesting. Like uh, on the nose and on my initial sip of this, uh, it's so raw sugar cane in the, such a great way. But now that my palate has adjusted slightly to it, the molasses is just huge on it as mm-hmm. well. It's got a butteriness to it that uh, that just follows through the whole flavor. This is well, the first thing you said was there's so much going on here. Yeah, and there's, that really. I mean, is I true. can I can sit here and keep going with the flavors. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a little cinnamon in this. There's a little um, well, I just lots of things going. I on. I feel like if you're someone who really loves and appreciates like a good cognac or a very like top shelf sipping tequila, you're going to find some of the same qualities you like in those things, even though this is rum and it has a very different flavor. You're going to find some of the same qualities you like in those things uh, in this, and it is. Uh, There's a little more oiliness to this too. It really mm-hmm. coats the mouth with that with that really nice uh, oak astringency a little bit. You know, it makes your mouth water. It makes mm-hmm. you want a little more of it. It's a Colombian rum. It says forged through generations of uh, Spanish artisans with a love of liquors and a passion. I want for this with uh, with a cigar that has a Cameroon wrapper. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. That's got that sort of spicy Cameroon yeah. vibe to uh, like, to it. Yeah, like this this will and and generally on the lighter side of cigar, I think for this not like on the milder uh, uh, milder flavor. Uh, Flavor fullness on a cigar, I think, would go really well with this. I think of our friend uh, Chris Hart as I'm drinking this because or a Candela wrapper would uh, go or great. Or Candela, with this. Yeah. yes, absolutely, absolutely. I love the green Candela wrapper. Choice, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think of our friend Chris Hart when I drink this because uh, uh, even though no one cares about him, he um, he has been getting more and Wait, more into rums. Who, who are we talking about? Uh, never mind. It's, okay. it's nobody just, cares. Just a guy. Yeah, nobody cares. <laughs> uh, no, but he's been getting more and more into rums uh, lately, and he was the guy who brought us that, that British, rum. British Royal Navy mm. rum, which wow. was something we described as uh, life-changing. Yeah. Um, and this is such a different vibe from that, but I'm wondering if this isn't, Really, about as good. This is this is pretty way. outstanding. You know, yeah. you know. It's funny too because I, I'm just letting the aftertaste mm-hmm. and the aftertaste is changing and doing tons of it's, things. It's too. so so pleasant on the finish. This is this might be one of the more complex rums that I think that we've had on this show. Dave, are you a rum guy? Oh yes, you are a rum yeah, guy. Yeah, like that's it. what I thought. Yeah, um, yeah I know you enjoy cognac. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. Uh, this this is fabulous. And I love sipping rums, but this is, as, as you said, very complex, very layered, great finish, presents well right up front. Mm-hmm. This is probably the best rum I've ever had. Wow. There's almost like a little bit of birthday cake on the finish. <laughs> really? And, and you could have one of those expensive cigars because it's your birthday. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, I so, like it. See, this is working. So every yeah. night you open up one of these, happy birthday <laughs> It's to my me. birthday. It's my birthday. Yeah, <laughs> nah, nah, yeah it's nah, interesting. Nah, it's, nah, it's, nah. it's in the aftertaste, like and in the retro hail in the aftertaste. There's almost a little like, like birthday cake kind of thing going on. So we've talked a lot about palate. When we come back in our next segment, uh, we're going to talk about how to develop your palate for Cigars, and I mentioned this earlier, but uh, people do ask me this, and I don't necessarily think I've got this really well developed palate. I, I see reviews where they talk about, you know, 
uh, hints of fine Corinthian leather and you know <laughs> stuff like that. And I'm like, what? Well, like you smoked it down too far. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I love that Corinthian leather is a thing because it's just leather from Corinth. Right. Yeah, or um, or is it? Or is it it's from New York? I think yeah. yes, exactly. That, that, that's <laughs> literally a phrase they made up. It's from the Bronx. It's, it's literally a phrase they from made the, up to make that leather sound district. more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's from the garment district. Uh, but uh, but no, I, I don't have that developed a palate. But I have learned as I've smoked cigars over the years how to like look for. And experience different flavors in the cigar. I think it's it's a lot like uh, like your ears do this, your eyes do this. When you're looking for something and someone points it out, and you go, "Okay, I can see that." Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Fair point. sometimes it's hard not to see it after that. Like like the FedEx with the little arrow in it. Like mm-hmm. if you've never seen that before, you're gonna look at it and be like, "Oh, there's the arrow," and then you can't unsee it. You, you know? can't unsee it. So I you you have an arrow uh, on the, the FedEx, FedEx logo. Symbol? Didn't know that. It oh yeah, you'll never you'll FedEx have... and there's an arrow. You didn't know that really. Or yeah, you, it's, it's in the negative it? of the E to the X. Did not know. Yeah, that. so it's you like did. it's one of those things where once you learn to see it, right? Uh, and same thing with cigar. Once you learn to to taste these flavors, and once you learn to look for them, it's hard to not look for them right. after you can't that. Unsee you know? it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And by the way, E to the X. That's what my hip hop album is going to be e called. E to the X. E to the X. Yes. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, so I tell you what we'll do. We'll take a quick break and and uh, maybe enjoy another sip of this pretty amazing Porteño Twenty One. I'm telling you, people, this might be the best buy in run. That's pretty outstanding because yeah. it's under sixty bucks, and for that, I mean, wow, wow. I'm not sure what. I the only thing that I can think of that you can buy in this price range. To get an experience this good would maybe be the Skelly. Skelly. Yeah. Tequila. But Skelly's yeah. not this complex. It's no, amazing. It's, a, it's wonderful, and it's really smooth and easy to drink. Right. But it is not this complex. You're it's right. It's not this complex. This is as complex, almost as complex, if we're going to talk tequila, as the Reserva de la Familia. Maybe my, not um, quite. My hip-hop album is going to be called Junk in the Trunk, and it's just going to be a picture of my car trunk with all the junk in it. <laughs> I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> That's great. Oh, uh, man. As long as you have a guest slot for Cardi B, I'm in. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Proving you can have an album called Junk in the Trunk and people with no talent on it, and it can sell. That, that, well, that's what it needs these days. Yeah, that's and exactly right. All right, we are going to take a break. When we come back, we will uh, not only be talking about expanding your cigar palette and how to do that, but we're also going to be tasting... The Smog City Brewing Company limited release bourbon barrel aged OE. It is a barley wine style ale. Ian, did I have you at bourbon oh, yeah. barrel? Where, where did it is? It's Bizarro Day. I brought the IPAs. You brought the barley yeah, wine. Right. So we're going to come on. We're going to be back to do that. And it is uh, fun. and how appropriate that you're here, Dave, for Bizarro Day. Of course. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it works. We'll be right back with our final segment, Smoking and Toasting, number 123, brought to you by B&B Butchers and Restaurant. We'll be right back. <laughs> okay. No Shock problem. in the trunk. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't stop myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's very good. Featuring, featuring no talent and a lot of auto-tune. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> that's what it takes for the sound of today. Mm. Apparently that's what it takes to get on the Grammys. There is not a single performer on the Grammys this year that I would walk across the street to see live. That's pretty either amazing. or or if there is, I haven't seen them announced. Like of all the stuff I've seen, announced, it's amazing it's that terrible. you say that too because you have a very open mind. For I do good music. I love pop music. Like uh, and I I love R and B and hip hop, but I just can't stand some of the stuff that's out now. Uh, I mean, are you kidding me, Migos? That's the biggest blend of crap I've ever heard. <laughs> it's getting to where though. Okay, so at least in the television and movies world, the Kardashians might be a sensation, but nobody's casting Kim Kardashian in the next big uh, film, right? Right. You still got to be an actor. You still got to have acting talent, right? To some to, kind to, of to skill level, some kind of skill level to get cast by Hollywood in the big movies, but apparently. Just having an Instagram account and a lot of attitude, you can do Grammy-nominated uh, rap songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, 
I've seen Cardi B perform live on Saturday Night Live. She sh- she shouldn't have left her home. That's it was terrible. I don't e- see. I don't. I couldn't name a song from her. I I ignore so much of that music. Mm. I'm sure if I heard it, I'd go, "Oh, I've heard that before." But I, I literally just don't just register awful. it. Just awful. And and again, I don't dislike the genre. She's just not any good at the genre. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you don't think she's going to have twenty year lasting power? No. I, I I'm surprised she's lasted twenty minutes. But, but like she's the hot thing right now because she goes on Instagram and calls everybody bitches or whatever, you know. Well, that's what you do to get famous. Yeah. I'll say this: she makes Nicki Minaj look like the most talented thing you've ever seen. Cardi B. Yeah, <laughs> that's bad. Yeah, that's really bad. Sorry, I'm still ranting about Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand her. Have you heard these before? <laughs> Some of the rants. I heard voices. First, I said, "Follow the light," and then I said, "Wait a minute, wrong shot." Wait, I hear voices. Um, I heard voices. Yes. Sorry. You know, I, I think I had that punch cigar a few oh, yeah? days ago in Austin. It was in the uh, Cigar in a Month Club. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And huh. a small punch is excellent. And this month, all of them were ninety and above. Four cigars. Wow. And which uh, which cigar of the month club are you on? Uh, cigar it's a good mm-hmm. Yeah. I need to hook up on one of those. Yeah. I always forget to do it. Yeah. And it's really good. And this past month, they have except four exceptional cigars. They're that Oliva I have to check out because, I mean, he had, what, three of them on it? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. Gilberto Oliva. It's mm-hmm. like a, right. a line of Oliva. Sub-brand, yeah. And they're just delicious. Yeah. They're all like a little bit smaller, uh, yeah. but they're but they're just they're just. Oh, I know what you mean. Sometimes uh, you want to light up. Yeah, right. So they're going, how long till dinner? Well, how long till we go out? Uh, okay, good. That informs the cigar. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't have an hour and a half. That'll influence I can't the choice. Light up an hour and a half cigar. Now I need a forty. If it's cigar. just my choice, if I go, I just I'm going to spend this evening having a cigar. I, I like big honking cigars. Mm-hmm. I like Churchills. I like Coronas. Mm-hmm. I like. Mm-hmm. But uh. But uh, yeah, you have to sometimes you commit that hour, yeah. and there's nothing worse than you have to burn down an hour and a half cigar in an hour. Yeah. Oh and right, you don't right. Enjoy it. And it's too hot, and you take. See, and I won't, and, and I won't it. try to rush it. I'll actually sacrifice the end of the cigar. I'll just be like, ah, I hate doing that. You know. I know. Me too. Brian says he wants to introduce a brand, uh, a brand of nuts called D's. <laughs> D's nuts. D's nuts. Uh, when I pass this to you, you will need your knife to. Oh, actually, you might not. You might be able to uh, to tear it, right. but you, yeah, your knife will help. I cut you, man. Stand back when I whip this out. <laughs> Stand back. I don't know how big this gets. I'll put this on camera. This is my ugly sweater knife because it's got a, mm-hmm. a pattern on it like an ugly sweater. Are we catching that? Yeah. <laughs> There you go, the ugly sweater pattern. All right. Final segment. Here we go. <clears throat> On the beach in Hawaii. Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toasting. It's show number 123, and we are brought to you by uh, the fine folks at B&B Butchers and Restaurant uh, in uh, in Fort Worth, in the shops at Clear Fork, and in Houston, Texas, at 1814 Washington Ave. Uh, Ian is uh, is holding our, our uh, barley wine well, that we're going to be tasting. Here, here. I'll, let you, I'll uh, let you read off of it before I... I, I was going to say, I, I was going to ask you, what is the actual ABV? But I see it right here. It's 13.1, my friend. Well, 13.1. Like, you actually, like, everything you say about this beer makes me love it more. Oh, yeah, and you haven't even tasted it. <laughs> we haven't even cracked the wax seal yet. Have you had, have you had, you like stouts, right? Yes. Have you had the, um, it's a local one. It's uh, Southern Star makes Buried Hatchet. No. Nope. Oh, but it's, really? it's quite a thing. It is literally one of the best. It's it's up there with uh, Founders Breakfast Stout. Okay. It's Founders one of the breakfast. absolute best stouts yeah. in existence. Mm-hmm. It's it's wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful. We have some great breweries in here. I've I've treated uh, Dave to some St. Arnold stuff, which I know yeah. he's really enjoyed. We uh, we did some Buckle Bunny earlier, Buckle which Bunny. was uh, love the yeah, packaging and the names. Which was delicious. Yes. Uh, so yeah. So this will be uh, interesting. This is. <laughs> Excuse me. This is Smog City. So this comes to us uh, uh, from 
Um, oh, you know what? I didn't. I didn't write down where this is from. Ian, can you tell from the label well, uh, where Smog City Barley Wine is from? I, I usually write these in my notes. Torrance, for the show. California. Torrance, uh, California. I was going to guess Los Angeles. Yeah, I was going to say. City. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. Torrance. Torrance. That's that's where you go if you. Uh, if you want to live in L.A. but not enjoy any of the nicer things that L.A. has to offer. <laughs> All the uh, traffic and none of the benefits. Well, that's right. With, <laughs> right. I guess, the possible exception of Smog City Brewing yeah, because yeah, right. yeah. apparently these guys have got some things going on. So uh, this was a uh, uh, actually a very highly rated beer. Not that I pay that much attention to beer ratings because it seems like everything gets either a three-point something or a four-point something. So it's kind of hard to figure out what. What are you doing over there? You know. Uh, <laughs> Ian, is, Ian, are you struggling with the wax uh, no, coating on there? Oh, I, got, I got this. I got this. Right. I'm enjoying the ceremony of oh, it. Okay. Yeah, well, there is <laughs> there is a certain amount of pomp and circumstance. It's kind of like the lighting of a cigar. There's a right. certain amount right. of routine and ritual that is a big part of... Wow. Ooh. Yeah. Now, that's interesting because I'm not expecting this to have any carbonation whatsoever, being a uh, it doesn't say 13% is, is barley wine. Old English style barley wine, I'm mm-hmm. assuming, since it says but it OE. is it is an ale, so uh, you know it's a barley wine style ale. So and I'm it's, interested it's got in a that little bit of a head on English it. English so. barley wines, I love American barley wines. Ah, maybe. Really? Yeah. Well, this would be an American barley wine. Did you pass that over to Adam? I did. I, okay. That went all the way well, down. So down. pass sorry. one more over. That's all right. That one. I'll give you one <laughs> that's that was right. unsnipped. It doesn't have to be unsnipped. That's. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> well, immediately I can tell you, Ian, this is, uh, on the nose, this has just got oh, you. Oh, I love it already. It's got you written all over I it. I love it's it already. Like The sort of date and oh. dried fruit uh, uh, aromas. I, I can't uh, smell any hops at all. Yeah, no, you really, <laughs> I'm not sure it even has any hops. <laughs> uh, you know, we were talking about the Bud Light ingredient label, water, malt, barley, and hops. You might have to take the hops off this, uh, uh, this ingredient label. Um, oh, my God. Wow. So this th- is this is chocolate raisinets wow. mm-hmm. right here wow. and, and date and 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 and, and the uh, like sweet bread. Oh my goodness! Mm-hmm. This is uh, this is something else. It's really, really. Uh, this is as complex a barley wine as I think I've ever uh, ever tasted. I it's hate just a uh, a completely different. Um, I hate to admit it. You ever yeah, on, on the mouthfeel? We've all eaten at Outback Steakhouse, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. You know that uh, that Shiner beer bread that they put out on the table? Yes, I'm familiar That's with what you're talking so about. So good. Yeah, and it's like soaked in 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 beer is what it feels like. Yeah. Is what it tastes like. It's this not, it's this not has moist, a lot but. of that beer bread kind of thing and mm-hmm. sweet. This is so good. Mm-hmm. I love this 100. percent mm What else is showing up? The the bourbon flavor. Melds really well in there. Bottle, if you would. Yeah. Let me just uh, see what I can get. The bourbon. Yeah, Yeah, the bourbon cuts through. On some bourbon barrel aged stuff, you get more oak than bourbon. This has the bourbon flavor really cutting through with a little bit of that oak uh, bite at the end. This is absolutely outstanding. And and we've been eating these uh, whole fancy cashews. (laughs) <laughs> that just yes, oh, oh it totally works <laughs> with them, doesn't it? Um, Smog City Brewing is a brewer-owned and operated craft brewery in Torrance, California, uh, that was uh, devoted to that is rather devoted to producing creatively inspired and exceptionally balanced uh, beers. This is a thirteen point one percent barley wine style ale, and uh, it is it's it's pretty exceptional. Smog City. These uh, the um, if you <coughs> still have some left. Uh, Try the uh, Porteño, twenty-one year old. Oh, the with Porteño it. with it. It's amazing. They like marry each other perfectly. Mm. Like, well, I'll tell you, the Porteño is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. nice. And, and it's funny because like the the mm. barley wine, as big and crazy sweet as it is, doesn't destroy the complexity of the rum either. Yeah. Now, so. what would you smoke with this, Ian? If with this were, barley if, wine? Yeah, if you were going to mm. have some of this and a cigar, what would you mm. what What direction would you head? I'm curious. <clears throat> a friend of mine turned me on to the uh, the uh, uh, Super Lajero, mm-hmm. Rocky Patel Super, Super Oh, Lajero. yes, yes, yes. I would say that would go great with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, Something that's a really Lajero. big and bold. Yeah. That's very mm-hmm. big. The uh, CAO Triple Maduro <coughs> would be an amazing thing with this. Mm-hmm. The uh, the uh, Ruination 
uh, Man of War Ruination. You're talking all like big cigars, cigars that are big. Yeah, enough you got to have a big cigar to knock a big boy up. Because yeah. if you if you take a uh, if you take a Fuente with a Connecticut wrapper mm-hmm. with this, you're not even going to taste that cigar. Right? No, you're smart. right. It's going to yeah. You, you'll bear, yeah. <laughs> You'll barely know because this has so much flavor. You have to have something that'll stand up to it, but also something that won't run over it. So, what I would not have with this is a uh, is a um, La Flor Dominican would be, um, I think, a, a palate clash a little bit. Even though it's well, those are super Lajero cigars. I mean, well, the double Lajero, yeah. and the, but but they also have a lot more pepper and. And right. things like that, less chocolate and in them. Whereas, not, like the that yeah. Rocky Patel Superhero has a lot more chocolate mm-hmm. and things like that to it. The um, the Ruination also is not a pepper bomb. As big as that right. cigar is, it's not a pepper bomb. Right, it's powerful so, but not pepper. I wouldn't want something with a ton of pepper to go with this. I want mm-hmm. something that's going to have a smooth finish on it, so that I, so that they don't fight each other. Maybe an Ave Maria or yeah, uh, yeah, something yeah. like that would yeah. go well because those. Cigars are big, but not like you said, not peppery. Yeah, big yeah. flavor. You got to have something big flavor, though. You got to have on the high end of of. I think for this, uh, for this beer uh, with a cigar, you have to have <coughs> something that's going to be on the high, on the top side of medium to full. So we're talking about your palate and cigars, and uh, there's a great article that came out recently in Cigar Aficionado, and it basically says there's no like definitive tried and true method, like. Here's how you develop a palette for cigars. A, do this. B, do this. C, do this. You'll have a, uh, a palette for cigars. But there are a number of techniques that they say uh, that new cigar smokers can try in order to better understand the taste of a cigar. And so they uh, put their um, editorial staff together and got some ideas. And the best way to start, uh, one of them said, is by taking on broad strokes. In other words, familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with the basic differences between the different categories of cigars. Not only the different sizes, yeah. but the different categories of, of, of uh, what a cigar is and what, a, uh, what, cigar from, what cigar tobacco from different countries is sort of generally expected to be like. There are always exceptions, but generally speaking, if you smoke a Connecticut Shade wrapper cigar, with Dominican tobacco, for example, it's going to be a lighter, creamier, right. butterier, <coughs> excuse me, ki- type of cigar. Yeah, right, right. Whereas if you smoke something with Nicaraguan tobacco, which, by the way, what you just a, said a moment ago goes great with wine. Oh with yes, white abso- wines. absolutely. You have a glass of white wine; it's nice and cold. You have a cigar like that; it's wonderful. You uh, turn me on to what is it? The um, it's the is it. Perdomo, the Perdomo champagne. Oh uh, yeah, uh, with uh, with like a, a single malt um, Glen Morangi ten. Glen Morangi ten. Oh my God, it's wonderful. And it's that's a, it, not a big single malt, but it's no. so subtle and wonderful Fruity, and buttery. Wonderful, delicious. Yeah, and and with that cigar, it just it just what's pairs what's like nice crazy. about that particular pairing is not only does the cigar and the whiskey form like Voltron and turn into something <laughs> amazing. Um, is that it's incredibly affordable because the ten year old Glen Morangi is is forty ish, right? You know, for a bottle, mm-hmm. which is if you're going to buy a nice scotch, if you're if you're not much of a scotch drinker and you want to buy something nice that's not like real smoky, mm-hmm. that's a great one to go to because yes. it's fruity on the palate. It doesn't have a ton of smoke in it. Um, and then the Perdomo uh, Champagne is on the milder side. It's actually a milder cigar than I generally smoke. Um, it's definitely got flavor, but it's a mild, uh, p- mild in, in its in its power and its fullness, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but those two things blend so well together, and I recommend you know yes, uh, anyone out there who says don't put a piece of ice in your scotch, well, don't put a piece of ice in your scotch. I I, I put a piece of ice in almost every scotch that I drink. Mm-hmm. Um, I always try it neat, but then I'll go and and that Glen Morangi. You can taste so many different complexities when it's cold, and then as it warms up, you get more and more of those deeper, darker flavors out of it. That cigar goes with it. They pair amazing. It's it's just an absolute blast to do that. When you're when you're developing your palate for your cigars, <coughs> take something that you've heard like this, where Ian's talking about this particular cigar and what its characteristics are, and if that's a cigar that you have the opportunity to try, see if it it matches up for you in your palate with what he's describing, or what you maybe read in Cigar Aficionado or one of the other uh, magazines. In other words, make comparisons. Try smoking some of the things that you see reviewed in the magazines or that you might hear us talk about here 
And if we said, wow, it's got a lot of uh, chocolate uh, uh, to, to it or something like that, see if you find that. You might not, by so the way. here's an easy thing. If you're a guy who's listening to this because you don't hang out with a bunch of other... Uh, with a bunch of other uh, cigar smokers, and you don't mm-hmm. get to, to socialize that way. Um, here's a quick and easy way to do this. Read reviews while you smoke that cigar. Right. You know, read the review and, and think to yourself, see. okay, does this sound like something I like? Mm-hmm. And then, while you're smoking that cigar, read the review. And if it has flavors that you already have in your kitchen, use those as a palate tester. Like, if, if I say a cigar has a dark chocolate kind That's of smell, yeah. have a piece of dark chocolate there and literally sniff it, and right. then try your cigar and see if you can pick up see that flavor. See if you pull that You'll flavor You'll find that it's right. amazingly effective mm-hmm. to do that, to remind your nose, what am I looking for? And then you look for it, and sometimes you'll see it, sometimes you won't. But uh, I will say, if your cigar has black pepper, be a little careful about smelling the black pepper. might want to smell pepper peppercorns. Yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> not powder, not, not uh, ground. careful <laughs> about smelling the black pepper. Not that fine can, ground <laughs> That can make you not enjoy the cigar for the next twenty minutes. Yeah, right. you know, I just. Uh, but just, no, uh, I mean, you get the idea. Like, if you have some of those ingredients, you know, um, uh, then it's a nice, a nice thing to sit down. And this works with whiskey too. You know, if you have fruity flavors in a whiskey, and you happen to have like, you know, those kind of fruits at the house, whether it's raisins or uh, grapes or um, date or mm-hmm. anything like that. I mean. Reminding your palate is a great way to do it. A couple of basic and simple uh, suggestions. One is don't worry too much about trying to, you know, suss out the flavors in the cigar unless you're first in the right environment. You need to be someplace where it's not super windy so your cigar isn't going to burn too hot. Uh, You need to be someplace where you really are able to relax and kind of let your senses come forward a little bit. I don't mean to sound too mystical mm-hmm. here, but but a place where you're relaxed enough that you're that you're able to really kind of it's kind of like about the diff- it. it's the difference between you know eating a hamburger that you grab at the drive through while you're driving on your way home and sitting down to a meal where you really taste what you're uh, what what you're having. It's the same same concept with cigars. Don't get too you know, crazy about identifying flavors in the cigar you're smoking while you watch walk down the beach. It's going to be a different vibe right. than if you're sitting somewhere and able to really chill and and really kind of go okay and take some time and hold the smoke in your mouth for a moment and then exhale slowly and see what kind of flavors kind of appear on your. Palate. Well, one of the things that I was up against when I was <laughs> first getting into cigars is I was a little intimidated. I'd walk into a cigar shop and I just assumed everybody knew tons more about cigars than me. Mm-hmm. Now, there's probably some validity to that, but I also at the same time felt intimidated by that, so I just kind of wander around and pick up this or that. Ask the people at your cigar shop, you know, tell them, "Hey, you know, I just got into smoking cigars. Nothing will make them more excited and wanting to like turn you on to, to great help you cigars. With stuff, yeah, I also find it's good to tell them I've had these things and yes. really liked them. What else should I try? Right. You know. The other thing is is try a lot of things. Mm-hmm. If, the more cigars you try, the easier it is to go. Okay, right. there's something about that cigar I like. Right. Try and, a Candela wrapper and it, keep a m- dossier. Yeah, you might love it, you might not, but it it will be an important part of you. Determining what you like. At, and you're so right, Ian. Keep a dossier. Not to make it too much like homework. Right. But if you just write down on a tablet or in a... So, you know, they make cigar journals if you want to get right. one and but, use it. But, but any any dossier, any... any uh, um, what do they call them? With the I can't remember, but the little folders, you know, mm-hmm. the, the notebooks or whatever. And you can just stick your wrappers there with some tape, with some scotch tape. Um, and, and if you enjoy a cigar... You don't have to do an in-depth interview or review about it. You just put the label there, write, this is one that I enjoyed, and write down some other things, like mm-hmm. if you're having a specific drink with it. You right, know? right. What, um, what what you maybe even had for dinner, if you had dinner before you right. did. Right, like Smoke a couple after having things. a big steak or after having you know uh, a particular kind way, of dessert. Because or I can't tell you how many times when I was learning to do this when I didn't do that, before I figured out that I should be writing stuff down when I didn't do that, where I had a cigar that I really liked, I had no idea what it was. Well, yes, that's right. right that's that's the right. Worst. Yeah. And, yeah, th- and then yeah. you want to then you want to go back and <laughs> buy it again. It, yeah, so and what you, was that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, uh, I I think one of the other things that's really fun about when you do keep a little journal of your cigars and write them down. It's really fun to go back after you've sort of forgotten and read them again. Because this wasn't just some guy at the magazine telling you what he was getting. No, this is me. This was you going, hey, 
I remember I did. I smoked this after we came home from you know the concert or what, whatever it is. Yeah, you know? and depending on your personality, you'll get to a point where you either keep doing that or you stop because you have a pretty good grasp on what you're going to like. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you know, and and be be willing to try different things. You know, if you're a mild to medium guy, be willing to try things that are medium to full. Right. But also, if you know, like for instance, well, I don't like a a lot of black pepper in there. Well, there's a lot of full flavored cigars that don't have a ton of black pepper. Right, and you can you know? find those. Yeah, um, and and if you convey these to your tobacconist, your people at your store, man, they, I, I will tell you, like. They're so excited to help you at a oh, store totally. and go, oh, you like this, then you should try this. If you mm-hmm. like this, you should try this. They are there to help you be a customer for life. They're not there to give you the wrong thing. On, that, on that same tip, by the way, if you are somebody who doesn't really know cigars, but you're buying a gift for someone who's a cigar smoker, just figure out a way, if you're a wife or a friend or a family member, whatever, just figure out a way to ask them one thing that they like, one cigar that they like. And if you can remember that and write it down somewhere, <laughs> then when you go into the cigar store, you can go, I'm here, I want to buy a cigar gift for whomever. I know they like this one. And boom, those guys, because they live for that stuff at the cigar store. Well, you know, really so I had, uh, over the holidays, I had a friend of mine's wife uh, text me, and she goes, hey, um, my husband's getting into cigars, but he's not entirely sure what all he wants. I want to get him something special. Well, the bottom drawer of my humidor, because my humidor has four drawers in it, the bottom drawer of my humidor is the special drawer, right? That's where, oh, <laughs> like, ah. that's where the that's where the expensive cigars <laughs> so are. So when I come lives. over to your house and you like take a bathroom ah. break, I know and what you drawer notice to that go bottom for. drawer is actually missing. Yeah, right, <laughs> <laughs> or it's locked. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, but uh, so what I did is I opened the drawer and I just texted her a picture with my finger pointing to a few different cigars. And mm-hmm. that way, she can take it straight to the p- tobacconist and go, oh, my friend recommended this or this or this. Do you have something like that? You know, Right, exactly. You know, I mean, you can make it easy, but developing your palate takes time, and, and don't try to rush it, you know? Yes. Figure out what you like by experimenting. Take your time with it and read reviews. Like, Half Wheel is such a great resource for that. It really is. Pay attention. If you really like a cigar that uh, that you read a review about and you're smoking the cigar and you're reading the review, pay attention to the things about that cigar that you like. But don't let those reviews intimidate you. Yeah, don't, don't. Because these are people who have a whole lot of time on their hands. Trust yes. Me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they yes. really do. Well, and, and in the case of some of those review people, they're getting paid to make a review. So, right. So there's, you know... Uh, and. And and I'm not, not not paid by the cigar company, but they're getting paid to sit down and take the time to really dig into this, mm-hmm. and we appreciate that because then we can read the review and go, hmm, I'm probably going to like this, you know? Yeah, so. it's got flavors of anise that were raised on the uh, western uh, side of the hill in uh, a uh, small village just south of uh, the Johannesburg. Hopa Valley, yeah, greater. exactly. <laughs> it's like uh, what? Uh, but you will read some stuff like that in reviews, some stuff's and, it's, outlandish, and it's ridiculous. Yeah. But but you'll also read a lot of stuff that does begin to make sense to you. And I will say, my palate for cigars is much better today than it was a year ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like it's not something that necessarily you reach this place. Okay, now I got it. Like I'm learning. I'm picking out things in cigars now. And by the way, the same thing's true for spirits or, or for sure. beers. Picking out things now that I didn't pick out uh, even just a year ago. What was uh, what was your go-to? Like, when you <laughs> when you started smoking cigar, what was your go-to cigar? In the early days of smoking? Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, early days is uh, my go-to is whatever Cruz picked out. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's being far too modest. He actually no. knows a lot more so about cigars. No, than no but he told me, and I would go to the store and describe what I like. Uh-huh. And Cruz would turn me on to different cigars. Uh, and, yeah, and I think a lot of it depends on your mood, uh, the, the setting, the time of year. It's, it's summertime. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Summertime, I want something maybe a little less full. Mm-hmm. It's hot. You want to sit on the deck. Right. You don't want to go too big. Right. You don't want to, winter, you don't want to feel like you're... Winter comes. I'm in, I'm in the little uh, den, uh, a cognac full of smoke. Mm-hmm. So it really depends. Why is cognac such a wonderful winter kind of feel? It is, though, isn't it? Because it just warms you. Yeah. And yeah. It does a whole ritual of holding mm-hmm. it. Yeah. it. We really need yeah. to do We've had cognac on the show, but we've not done a lot with it. We really should do a cognac show. Yeah. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, that would be fun. Just yeah. comparing some different ones and maybe some cognacs in different price ranges and seeing, you know, 
are these worth it that are more expensive and so on? You know, right? Yeah, w- that would be a lot of. So fun. also to 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 anyone out there, cigar one on one stuff, beginners. <laughs> yes, you can go. Uh, there's a lot of places online where you can find a special, especially during holidays, where you get an assortment of cigars and a cheap humidor. Mm-hmm. Worth it. Buy totally it. Totally worth it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Buy it. Because it. one of the things that if you're spending any money at all on cigars and they're getting too dried out because you don't have the right way to store them, um, it a, a you're, you're wasting your money, but B, you're not going to enjoy those cigars uh, when you smoke them the same way because they're going to be right. too dry. And so. if you don't have room for a humidor, which is generally a nice looking wooden box or it doesn't fit in your wife's decor or whatever the deal is, uh, Bovita makes these humidor bags mm-hmm. and you just stick little elements in there. They're, they're pretty inexpensive. You tuck them away in the closet. Every once yeah. in a while and then you put them in a drawer. Put them in your sock drawer. Right. It's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. Absolutely right. Bovita is, man, those guys. Yeah, those, they they're so on it. do such a great they're so thing. on it. Uh, Dave, what are your, uh, these days, if you're going to, if you're going to think of a couple of cigars that are your favorites, what are those likely to be? Um, Patel's, Alex Bradley. Yeah. Um, nubs. I, I, oh, you like the nubs? I, yeah. I love the nubs. I, Ian I like, is a big fan of I the like, nubs. I like the uh, Cameroon uh, with the chisel tip. Oh, nice. I, yeah. I don't like the rounded tip. It's like, oh, it just see. doesn't hang in there as well. Interestingly, yeah. Cigar Aficionado, uh, the number one cigar of the year for 2018, the EP Carrillo from our friend Alan Denny. Who no one cares about. Yep. Uh, it, but it dethroned something like six years running that the number one cigar on the list was a torpedo or a figurato right, or, right. or a shaped uh, yeah. a shaped head to the cigar. And this is the first year in a long time that it wasn't a torpedo. And interestingly enough, on the list, and this is true on a lot of the lists, that the rounded head cigars have made a big comeback in the last yep. year. Well, at here's least in terms of what's uh, getting raised. Here's the thing. I think I think some people like those other shapes too because you get a smaller aperture, mm-hmm. yep. and you get less um, less tobacco in your mouth, and it's just it's neater. Mm-hmm. Which um, I actually appreciate. I, you know, my go to is a punch. I, I, I always was, punch. A yeah, punch of V cut. And uh, yeah. yeah, for the same reason. Right. I always punch. It's yeah. a super neat aperture. Right. Um, yeah. And on a nice cigar, man, it looks great. It's just a perfect hole. Right. And just much harder, though, to use a punch or even a V on a, <laughs> on you, a Well, torpedo. you can't yeah. use yeah. that like, on impossible. on anything with a <laughs> yeah anything with a pointy tip. You can't use it. I have but cut a torpedo with a V before just because it was <laughs> you the have to only nibble at it a little bit, right? <laughs> no, you know what you do <laughs> is you, it, you sure. cut it. <laughs> and then you turn it, and you cut it, and then you turn it, and oh, then you cut it. Hilarious. And oh, if God. you get down far enough on oh, the uh, wow. on the front end, then that's, you get a smokable. Uh, that's front a man end. who wants a cigar. Well, I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you. So there's it's a important. practical reason too. Is I I'm out and about a lot. Okay, so for me, um, he mentioned that I'm a big fan of the nubs. So one of my absolute go tos is a nub Maduro. Okay, because you can get in a tube. That okay. tube is protecting and holds in the uh, humidity. Goes in your pocket. Goes really in your easy. pocket. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now. The punch, because you can get lighters with a punch built on. I got one in my yes, pocket yes, right now. Totally As a matter of fact, I've got a cheapy lighter in my pocket that's awesome. It holds a ton of fuel. Like I don't even know what sure brand this the... is. It's a, a it's Fre- Vertigo. Oh, oh, Fred's lighters. I've seen those. Vertigo, right? This is just a cheapy. This is less than twenty dollars. Okay. Yeah. This has. Let me hold this up here. It has a punch built right in. Not yep. only that, they thought ahead. If you look right there by my finger. When you close this, it cleans the, uh, the it punch pops up, out yep. the little uh, oh, nice. tobacco that's left Love in that. there. Love it's that. got four so torches. If you can't light a cigar with four torches, yeah. you've got other problems. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it I holds. I can light a grill with four torches, but that's a completely I swear, different yeah. story. I swear, when I fill away. this, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> when I fill this later, I can feel my butane is yes. like lighter. You know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it lasts a long time. So I, like this is a perfect like toss in a pocket and go. Of course, I have nicer lighters, um, but this is awesome because it's just it's just utility. It's 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 uh, super nice. I don't worry about it if I leave it or break it or whatever. I don't worry about it. It's not my you know. Seventy dollar, eighty dollar uh, uh, Zycar, which yeah. is awesome, uh, which also has a punch built in. But that's why I, I don't have to carry as much stuff. So I, I punch first because, man, you can find a lighter with it built right in. It's awesome. Last thing I will mention as far as developing your palate for cigars, uh, Ian was talking about um, 
using a cigar journal or just a notebook or something to write down uh, your thoughts about the cigar you're smoking. I highly recommend this. You smoke something and you make some notes on it, particularly if you it was a cigar you enjoyed. Uh, go back to that cigar six months, a year later. Smoke it again. Write down your notes on it this time, and then, and then go compare. back and compare and see if you are getting anything different. See if you recognize the things that you recognized before. Did you maybe recognize them easier this time? It'll give you a good feel for how your your palate is developing. And by the way, you can do the same thing for beers and spirits and other things too. Super, it doesn't just have to be super cars. fun thing too. Uh, my friend Brian on here, our our wiki, our friend. Wikipedia Brian. Yes, um, <laughs> he put a. He put up uh, there's there's uh, apps cigar scanner apps mm-hmm. just like there are for beer just like there are for, for tons of things that you stuff, can yeah. keep track mm-hmm. of what you've had and you can probably put little notes. So while I'm old school and I think it's kind of cool to have a little leather bound dossier, um, you can do this right on your phone and yeah. and take care of it. You know, yeah, yeah it's nice and easy too. You absolutely Plus, right. You look a little classier with an actual leather bound dossier mm-hmm. than you do with. Just taking pictures of your. You look cigar. more professorial, and but as, I can see how handy that is. Yeah, and as we know, Ian professorial. Is, I love it. Well, Ian is all about the look because you're the you're the guy that taught me that the ultimate look for any guy, you know, uh, older guy, is the pipe with the really long oh, yeah. uh, the uh, church warden, uh, yeah, stem. church warden stem, stem on it, and then when you speak, you turn that around, you point, and you use it to point and accent your point. Absolutely, that Fabulous. is a beautiful thing. It's a Fabulous. wonderful Absolute piece of thing. sophistication. And then one of my favorite things, and, I, and I'll have to have a pipe to do this, but one of my favorite things is the momentary I'm about to say something, but then I decide not to. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. I love that. Oh. Uh, what a great place to wrap the show right there. That is just brilliant. <laughs> By the way, we are going to do, and we'll do it before it starts to warm up, uh, Pipe Smoking uh, 102. 101.2? Or 101.2. Whatever or one, the next one. One. We did 101. So what's next? 101.1? 101.1 is funnier. Okay, yeah. But, but it's a really awful. <laughs> There's a lineage thing there. It's a really awful radio station, though. So uh, I, I just don't want to. Uh, no, uh, but but that'll be fun. We, we will go and do a pipe smoking show because uh, here's, this is really interesting. Uh, the pipe smoking show we did. Uh, early on in Smoking a Toast, I think it was like close to episode 50. Yeah. One of the most listened to episodes we've ever done. I think it was earlier than that, and there was no video. Yeah. yeah so we right. can do it now with video, yeah. which would be nice because. And Ian can show you that thing I was describing. Yes. With and the then pipe. when we talk about like loading the pipe in the proper way and everything like that, you can see it. Maybe 101.05. There you go. <laughs> All right, Dave. Thank you so much thank for you. joining us for the show this week. It's always uh, good to see you, my friend. But even nice. even cooler to have you uh, uh, join us on the show and do a little tasting. Uh, thanks to uh, Adam Andrus, our producer on the Wheels of Steel, uh, to John Whiteside who makes all the tech stuff possible, and um, Ian. I am uh, I'm excited because we're going to go have a cigar. That's awesome. Pass me yes. some of that barley wine. Oh, I got it for you right and, here. Oh, and uh, cheers. <clears throat> yes. Oh, and by the way. Keep counting, eight days, and we'll be able to know what's in our Bud Light. You know what? I wish they would put the like like labels on maybe what's in my whiskey, what's in my vodka. Don't you have a pretty good idea like, what's in your whiskey and your vodka? I don't know because there's no labels that tell you what's yeah. actually oh, in it. Okay. All right. You think they would taste better if they had the label telling you what's in it? It would be. Well... See, this is part of the packaging. I know Bud thing. Lights. The better the packaging, the better the uh, the content, right? The better it tastes. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> if it's working for Bud Light, somehow Bud Light is going to start using Auto Tune. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> I will drink to that. Cheers, my friends. <laughs> Have a great week. Thank you for joining Hello. us for smoking and toasting uh, number one hundred and twenty-three. And oh, by the way, uh, before we uh, say goodbye, let me just mention that on next week's show. Garrison Brothers Whiskey. Sweet. Very excited. We'll see you uh, next week for show number 124. Have a great weekend. Uh, Cheers, my friends. So the problem with the show is we we don't actually have any fun when we do it. No, I know. It sucks. (laughs)